Hello, everyone, and welcome back uh, to the dual campaign of Altered Carbon Birmingham Uprising. Uh, this is a, done in collaboration with Level Up Dice. So on Thursdays, 1 p.m. PT, we have one side of the story happening uh, in the 24th century, specifically the year 2368. And we have Fridays with us at 1 p.m. PT with this uh, incredible crew of players that are going to say the other side of the story of what happens in Birmingham. So with uh, Birmingham. It is not the Birm Birmingham, if you're familiar with uh, Birmingham in Britain. Uh, the Birmingham that we are um, operating in is uh, united Britain. It's a sprawling, messy, thriving metropolis. Uh, it's We specifically are in central within uh, uh, Birmingham, but Birmingham is now it's Nottingham. Now it's most of Wales. Now it's Leicestershire. It's this great urban sprawl. It's engulfed Cambridge. It's 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 everywhere. It's it's a lot of things. There's a number of different movements that are involved uh, in Birmingham. Everything from uh, royalists to anti-Americanization. There is a lot going on in the future. And are we surprised? Are we surprised that this dystopian future is, is what we will have? Um, Birmingham is a supplement of altered carbon that is not available yet, but it will be. And it comes from the genius mind of Kat Evans. So, um, you know, many snaps to them for letting us play in this world that they've created with uh, Hunters Entertainment. So I'm your GM, uh, Markia McCarty. Uh, you might know if you're like a Hunter's Entertainment person, you might know me from Tuesdays where we do Outbreak Undead. Uh, otherwise than that, you know, I pop up in different places on the internet and I do uh, horror stuff with something scary and all that really fun things. So let's go ahead and go in on our players that we have co-creating this cyberpunk dystopian future. The things that are going to happen to us in this, I'm just... Ooh, I'm loving it. Uh, let's go ahead and start with Hobo. Hobo, please, yourself, your pronouns, go in on your character and also their pronouns. Ah, okay. Uh, hello, my name is Freckled Hobo. You can call me Freck or Hobo. I am a she, her, uh, as well as my character, Miss Mama Sky. She is also a she, her. Uh, Miss Mama Sky is not somebody that you want to mess with, but yet if you trust her, she will trust you. Uh, if you're looking for a place to hide, something to, to be able to stash uh, important information, important items, important people, Mama's Brothel is where you want to go. Uh, she's right in the middle district, so she can handle both the upper class and the lower class. There's no disrespect or judgment from Miss Mama Sky. Uh, she has one of her favorite ladies, Miss Charlotte, who's had a rough spin the last episode. Uh, hopefully she's doing okay. I'd love to visit her, Mr. Gracious DM. Um, but other than that, Miss Mama is great. And she just, uh, she just wants to figure things out now at this point. Now she's just curious and worried about her own, her own safety. So I'm excited to see what happens in this game. Excellent. B Zelda, please, yourself, your pronouns, go in on that character and pronouns. Ah, uh, yeah. What's up? What's up? I am your non-binary busy B. Uh, my pronouns are they, them, and I am joining you playing Nero Wolf. Um, today, I didn't really walk around my house talking in an accent, so if I ruin it, I think I'm going to ruin it. Uh, Oh gosh, Nero's pronouns are he, him. He is, well, he's a bit of a detective. Uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm picking up the accent again. I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's got to talk. He's, um, he's a tall man. Uh, he wears a trench coat, as all men do when you are a detective. Uh, he's got some friends in high places and some friends in low places. But most of all, he has an intern named Luan. And Luan has been missing, and Nero cannot stand for that. This has been a bit of a stress on him, and he has been calling people left and right, trying to figure things out, trying to use his best detective skills, and it is getting him nowhere. Right? There's a lot of mysteries that needs to be solved. We're going to figure out some particular things with Luan. Maybe this episode. We'll see. Uh, Ali B., uh, yourself, pronouns for you and your character and go in on your character because, uh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this character. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allie B. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. 
Uh, I'm just your normal everyday tabletop game and video game designer and narrative designer. Uh, and then there's this character that I've chosen to portray. Uh, her name is uh, her or their name is Mephi Levesque. Uh, they are a very very sprightly ninety nine year old. Not quite a meth. You you cannot just take that title, you have to earn it. How you earn it? Well, that's better left unsaid. But uh, yes, Mephi has uh, decided to go on a bit of adventure for, we'll call him an old friend. Yes, yes. Charles is definitely an old friend. <laughs> and uh, just falling in with this ragtag group of outsiders that uh, it's an adventure. That's what you do. You fall in with random people. You you rough someone up. It, it's it's dread. Exactly. Atlanta, go ahead and round us out yourself. Your pronouns go in on your character. Yes. Uh, good morning. Good evening. No matter where you are. Um, I am Atlanta. I am she her. Um, and my character that I'm playing today is Ritz Miller. She's a she's an ex cop. Um, she basically got stood down from her job because she got too connected to a job which actually was very personal to her because her parents died in a homicide and they closed the case because there was insufficient evidence, but she wants justice. So in order to get that, um, she's trying to, she's going to work with a bunch of rag scallions that she wouldn't usually um, in order to, you know, find out what's like happening in the um, underbelly, but also what's happening to um, what happened to her parents, because that's, that's what her ultimate goal is, of course. Exactly. She's got to find out what happened with that. And uh, in particular, uh, who's covering up what, you know, exactly. with that, how does it connect with everything else? Yeah. Uh, okay. So if, you know, amongst the players, if you can, I mean, someone can start to volunteer or like switch hit or whatnot, let's do a recap of what was uh, learned and what happened in our first episode to then be able to jumpstart into this one. Tobo and I put out our, pull out our very detailed notes that aren't just three letters and it's Luan and three question marks. <laughs> Why? Uh. Luan, we miss you. Well, Nero got a call early on in the episode and it was the unpaid intern, Luan. Luan is not actually Nero's intern, um, nor does Luan get paid by Nero. It's, it's a friend, it's a give and take, you know? Uh, however, Luan possessed uh, some rather incredibly important information that he had stolen from the, who again? Uh, oh, wait, wait, he stolen from Longbridge Air and Space. What is the family called? The Windsor. The Windsor family. The Windsor family. Yes. Mm -hmm. The worst. The With worst. their horrible children, Charles and Henry. Hey. <laughs> it's your choice that you're the friend. Come on. Yeah, that's your choice. <laughs> um, and then Luan agreed to meet with Nero. However, he never made the meeting. And as the story progressed, it became clear that Luan was also supposed to meet Charlotte, who was... So is Charlotte... Uh, what, what is Charlotte's position in uh, Mama Sky's brothel? Well, to, to put it what as plainly it? as possible, she's one of my little doves. She's one of my favorite doves. She's got the best hair. Oh, it smells so good. Uh, smells and so she's, good. she's also uh, incredibly adept at sports. So oh, yeah, she's she, super beefy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, quads for days. I'm here for it. Well, uh, Charlotte was also supposed to meet Luan, which we, uh, I believe, the ex cop and uh, Mephi, what is your title? You just socialite, just socialite. That's your whole title? Um, dilettante? Uh, <laughs> parentheses yeah. troublemaker? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's the whole title. Yeah. Keep, socialite. Keeping in mind that. Uh, um, Oh, was it? Uh, Mephi is uh, does VR simulations of thrill kills where they're they're a badass in VR where she's like, bow, bow, bow. or I'm sorry, we didn't we didn't establish what the weapons. It might be that Mephi's you know body probably is everything. a lethal weapon. Yeah, in VR specifically in, in VR. VR. <laughs> 
Oh, goodness. Well, then uh, Fancy Pants and uh, ex-officer Miller were able to find Charlotte's body in that VR area where she was also supposed to meet up with Luan, and there was no sign of Luan, and she was beat up rather badly. Brought her back to the brothel, we got some information, and then that led us to the Undergarden. That place is only for the toughest of the toughs, the coolest of the cool, invite only. And when we were there, it became clear that uh, the person we were supposed to interview definitely has a name, Crossroads. Definitely has a name. name. Yeah, it was yeah. Crossroads. I have that yeah, Crossroads. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an Eclipse and Crossroads were the two people that we ended up yeah. fighting. That we, yeah, that we needed to, to find. find. We have to, yeah. yeah. And I mean, they're definitely not pro wrestlers and yeah. not uh, Ember Moon and Shayna Baszler at all. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, well, we fought our way. We slipped into some different skins. Miller didn't. Miller chose to remain in her own. Uh, brave soul. Brave, brave soul. Uh, and we just fought our way up to the top. I don't know how successful we were. We did some really cool things. Not everything landed, but we did our darndest. Um, all to make it to Eclipse and Crossroads. Who were supposed to tell us some really really good information and i think that eclipse no it was crossroads pulls this move that she's never done she grappled was it me it was milla yeah yeah all to we tell spit you. a little we spit a little something something in my ear um yes very interesting we learned about um, the fire station i recall we have to go there, and then I wrote down the word Nix, and I actually Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah so uh, what what Crossroads so said yeah. was, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared for him. Um, the fire station. They're either at the fire station. Uh, I've got more information here. Um, uh, the person that we're looking for contact. is Mag Darvish. Yeah. Um, or what, he's in. Or they're in the canal, and the person we want to talk to there is Nix. Yeah, and uh, just to retcon a little bit, uh, we'll say that Crossroads uh, slipped paper in your hand that had a home address located in the canals. Uh, okay. and, oh. and also uh, Crossroads would say, I don't think anybody else has this information. When he said, or when she said canals, I thought like, they're dead, their bodies in the water. That's what I thought too. I, like, I thought like a sewage system kind of thing where we have to go in a sewage type system. Oh. No, it's a, it's, a literal, <laughs> it's a literal address of a houseboat uh, located in the canals. <laughs> oh, we were so, all wrong. <laughs> Crossroads has given you the address of Nix, the home address. Do we know anything about this Nix character or did they tell us any information at all? Uh, that's Dives what the house. Were, yeah, that's what she was able to get out at that point uh, in yeah. the adventure. But y'all are still mid fight. Uh, uh, and <laughs> got you know, it. So there's still other things that can come out of this. Mm -hmm. We shall see. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah, but you definitely have uh, the name and address um, of the person that is directly connected with Luan, and um, you are certain that nobody else has this information. You can't be certain about any other information um, that you've gotten, for instance, the fire station, if that isn't out in the wind. But this, you know, is um, only your group has it. Uh, is there anything else that anybody would like to add? to uh to everything like it, it can be something like with your character that you just want to be like but then there's also this uh type of a deal feel free now is definitely the great time to do it um uh, the per uh, i don't know if it's too much but i just wanted to add in that the contact that we had that we ran into in the the bar that put us like in the underground that put us into the fight their name was ao just in case yes. they come up future on little cute little red puff buns so right just in case uh, we see them again excellent yes uh ao uh has a uh, uh, afro puffs uh natural redhead uh dark complexioned and uh, that was the third person in charge at the undergarden i uh, remember uh, she was the one that had a the ipad Right, iPad like touch screen um, and was taking care of the behind the scenes for everything at, yeah. at the octagon. 
awesome. Okay. And then and just, I just to... wanted to remind. Oh, yes, please. Uh, for viewers, uh, Mephi's goals may or may not actually align with the group, which was something that I was thinking about this week. I was like, oh, oh, this is actually going to be a challenge to like continue to play out. Because Mephi is looking for information on behalf of the Windsor's technique. Yeah, <gasps> that is that is something that I definitely want to stress here. Um, don't think of this adventure and the sense of good versus bad or anything like that. There are literally there's literally merit, um, and there's li literally merit to each one of these movements. To um, to secret royalists, where it's like going back and getting back power from the UN protectorate, which is very heavy handed with uh, um, everything that it puts over, you know, it's, it's like, we're thinking globally, it's the United Nations protectorate. So it's like, we're thinking go globally with everything. And then royalists want to go back to where Britain for Britain, where it's like, uh, oh, great, protectorate gave us, you know, this uh, standard of living, but they haven't given us purpose. We used to be this. So let's build on what we have and let's do this. And then there's um, anti-Americanization, which actually doesn't have like Americans like America. It's not like that. It's literally um, future Britain's response or future, future Birmingham's response to what they, uh, their perception of what the huge underclass in North America has gone through where it's like they want to have more autonomy, you know, um, they want to have more purpose. So in some instances, interests can align. So I do want to stress, do more what feels right for your character, as opposed to thinking rebels versus, you know, imperials, you know, it's, it's not, it's, no, there's a lot of that. gray, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's London and mm -hmm. future London. There's a lot of gray everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm. I work okay. best in the gray. <laughs> All right, so just some uh, other characters you just like throw in for uh, people joining our adventure right now to know. Um, uh, Mephi has a uh, Mephi has a assistant uh, and Angelique uh, who is there on call whenever uh, Mephi needs uh, for something. Uh, let's see. Nero is uh, a modified archetype uh, for um, altered carbon, and also uh, Ritz Miller is a modified type of uh, for altered carbon called Sleuth. And there's a number of things that come with this new. Let me. There's a number of things that come with uh, being a Sleuth. Uh, with this, with like uh, the starting packages and everything. I just I just wanted to say this really quick for those that are looking at Birmingham as a supplement to go for like their altered uh, carbon thing. Cause it's like, yeah, stubborn, resourceful, street smart, can cover their back. Um, also make a lot of enemies, you know? Uh, both of our sleuths, sleuths are not on the payroll. So there's a number of cons that come with uh, doing your own thing. So that's there's something. Reason, there's a reason I don't pay Luan. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you know what? There's a reason why Luan, um, is, you know, has other resources to be okay with working for you and not being paid. Yeah. We'll see if we discover that in this episode or not. I mean, you'll discover it eventually. I'm so excited. In any case, moving on. Uh, da, da, da. And also for Ritz Miller, uh, her uh, ex-partner, Aiden, is one that has been trying his best. He is still on the force. Uh, he has been trying his best to feed her information whenever possible. But also, also he has like, I don't know, this uh, dude bro filter of what he feels that she should have. Like he set on information for a while before he gave her the lead that led um, her and also Mephi to Charlotte to then that connection with Luan. So um, right. a source, but maybe not the most reliable source to go mm. on. And they, he also let me know about memory jacking, about all the memory jacking that's been happening at the moment um, within the, um, where was it? The, uh, the laws of perception. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is spooky stuff. 
yeah. <laughs> which and then also uh, Doors of Perception is, uh, we won't say a front because they literally do their own legitimate business, but it is a, uh, a hot spot for Echo, the drug that is literally made out of powdered cortical sacks. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's a thing. Don't, I don't recommend that drug uh, because of a whole other things that come with it. But if your characters choose to go down that route, there's a number of statuses <laughs> that would have to have to be applied. Let, let me know if we, if we go there. Um, I don't. Jeez. I don't foresee us doing that. But <laughs> in any case, I I don't think Mama Sky would take it. But I think that she would be a dealer since she's kind of like a hub for pleasure, and some people they just want to get down. So it is a possibility. Uh, okay. So, mm-hmm. Where, where we are right now, however, is that uh, there is the garden that exists in Central uh, above ground. The garden is a place to get your usual VR simulations done in real life. Uh, there are actors that are hired for so you can get that real person feel for uh, your fantasies. And as far as everybody is concerned on the books are in media, uh, nothing bad happens in the garden. You know, everything's consensual as far as people know. Uh, so where your characters are is the under garden, which is literally located underneath the garden. It is kind of a logical extension. If you have something above that is all above board and legal, you would have something below that is illegal and that really caters to our basic human need. And it is it is a quarterly seasonal type of a thing. When something happens in the undergarden, it is invite only, specific crowds, all of you in your own way, shape and form got your own say ticket or invitation to the undergarden. And tonight is fight night. And that is uh, MMA fighting within the octagon that is placed within the undergarden. Through a series of, Let's see, there's a negotiation. It was like a <laughs> Ritz Miller just kind of like steamed forward and, and was like, hey, so you look like you're in trouble, AO, and uh, we need some information because we need to talk to Crossroads. And because of that, uh, all of you found out and wound yourselves up in the ring. That was literally the only way to be able to talk to Crossroads. And you had to go through a round of a competition where each person shined in their own light. The second round was uh, other teams and apparently being evenly yoked, then catapulted your team, which had standing, like standing colors with the round one into the headlining act with Eclipse and Crossroads. Eclipse known as a submission expert and Crossroads known as a striker. Like didn't like to do submissions, didn't like doing, uh, you know, just grappling in general. So was more apt to knock someone out (laughs) than to have to bother grappling with them on the ground while Eclipse is deadly um, um, off her back. Meaning like when she, when she's on her, on her back, just try to break away, try to disengage. The fight's already done at that point. So with your um, interaction with the both of them, Crossroads knew why you were there and who you were looking for. Uh, And at the first opportunity, did a move that she normally would never do. And she uh, then got Ritz Miller close to her to then impart the information of Nix's home address uh, in the canals. Um, she also told you about the fire station. Well, we'll, we'll say that, but in particular, the home address of Nix um, and how incredibly scared that she was for Luan. So you are within the octagon. This information has been, uh, has been, you know, you've, you've heard this. The crowd around is going nuts. You see with crossroads where they're looking into the crowd as they're speaking to you and just like terrified um, for, for Luan. 
Uh, and uh, if anybody else follows uh, her line of sight, you see that there is a commotion that has happened um, in the audience around um, the individual that was uh, gliding around on his portable throne. It seems like there's a number of individuals that have surrounded this person. Uh, he was wearing a red tie and uh, tartan, uh, like a bit of tartan uh, mm -hmm. in his suit. Uh, and now um, as you watch, he pilots away like, you know what? I'm not even, no, I'm out. Uh, pilots away. And then there, there's a, it looks like there's a scuffle of rowdy people just not really understanding even though this is an invite only kind of a thing, you don't start fights in the pit. It's uncouth. So from your perspective, that is what you're, you're seeing right now with some individuals that look like they're about to start fighting like they're in the octagon. Uh, Ritz, you are still within Crossroads grasp, but as you feel that this is literally a just for the crowds moment, um, mm to be like held like that. And everybody else, uh, let's see, yeah, Sleuth, Mama Sky. Uh, and yeah, uh, Mephi has Mephi has a lot of VR time with like reading body language. Eclipse is still in it. Like Eclipse is, is like, oh, this is going Oh down. no. This is going down. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Crossroads is, is um, literally just doing this for a show and then having that distraction happen over to the, to the side. Um, gives her a breather to be able to, if you have, if you have some questions that she can say to you uh, right now, she, mm -hmm. she can. Yeah. Um, all right. So I am going to ask, um, who is next? Just to try to get some more, yeah, like some more info on Nyx. Oh, I, and I am so sorry. I totally forgot. Let me just say real quick to those people that are in chat, there is a giveaway that is going on. <laughs> <laughs> there's a giveaway that is going on there uh it's a stealth dice mk2s uh from level up dice or there is the altered carbon um rpg pdf and you can enter the giveaway uh right now i believe it is uh exclamation point giveaway to be able to enter into this uh, uh level i'm oh, no, just kidding there's two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there might be two there might be two please look in chat <laughs> Please look at chat for that because uh, I, I probably should have asked to get that information. Or yeah. Exclamation Aha. giveaway, exclamation level up. Thank you to our attack wizard, uh, JB Chara, for letting me know <laughs> that. Uh, but yes, that is how you enter. Uh, you get on on this. Free stuff. Free, yeah, cool free stuff. stuff. Get it. Uh, okay, so back to... <laughs> Back to uh, what you're asking Crossroads, and you're like, who is Nyx? Uh, yeah. Crossroads, that is the closest person that I know who is uh, attached to Luan. Even I'm not certain about a lot of things with Luan, and I don't think Luan actually meant to bring up Nyx but he's important. Nyx is important. Find Nyx and you can help Luan. And at that, I need for everybody to roll initiative order because Eclipse is still in the is still in this uh, battle. I'm gonna roll in for the audience as well for uh, because they are being distracted by these wh whoever these people are um, out in the uh, in the pit that are fighting. Uh, let me know if you need a reminder on how to. Yeah, do how do we roll initiative? Yep. Got it. So look on your um, character sheet. And when you look on mm -hmm. your character sheet under perception uh, in the far right, you will have a number there in parentheses. Maybe it's two, maybe it's three, maybe it's four. That yep. is how many D6s you're going to roll. Oh, okay. So if you look on the left hand side of roll 20, there is a D20, like second from the bottom. And yep. you'll go ahead and however many numbers that is, um, you'll roll that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Let me. 
roll for Eclipse, Rose, and the audience. Okay. Oh, right. lower numbers are better. Lower numbers are better. And yeah. just just to remind you also that with these dice that you've uh, that you've rolled, you will choose which of the dice that you are going to use for each round. For instance, uh, Nero rolled a one and a three. So you can choose to use the one or the three if you want to go earlier in the round or if you want to go later, that is fine. You're literally going to choose where, when you want to go uh, in the order. So that's you using uh, that dice for it. So you can ignore my third dice. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accident. Okay, no problem. All right. So, uh, in fact, starting with Nero, do you want to use your one or your three? I want to use my one. I want to go first. Okay, got it. Um, Allie, one or three? Oh, you are muted. Or Mephi. I will use my three. three. I'm sorry? I'll use my three. Awesome. Ritz. Uh, oh, I will well. use one of my three threes. <laughs> you literally <laughs> have three threes. So, okay, three. Uh, and Hobo, <laughs> your two or your one? My two. Okay. All right. So something with uh, you rolling in the same uh, turn order as somebody else, if you want to like combine your attack or whatever, or combine your negotiation or combine your search check uh, in some way, you can utilize it that way. It's just literally like this is happening at the same time, whatever it is that you want to do. So, uh, and I've rolled for audience eclipse and crossroads uh nero you are completely going first with that ace that one uh you what you see like within the octagon the audience right now is uh completely distracted by uh this other thing um out on the side uh eclipse is uh is flexing uh, and is like looking at uh, your party. She's aware that this is a headliner event. This is not a death match. This is an MMA match. It's not a legal MMA, MMA match. So therefore, you know, shots to the face um, and chokeouts are, are, you know, it's, it's, it's literally you versus them kind of a, kind of a deal. So you see Eclipse like flexing um, and you see crossroads um, from their body language. You can tell that they're putting on a show and they're talking to Ritz. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to play the game. I'm going to flex back at Eclipse and I'm going to go in for some jabs. Uh, nice. You know, we have to continue this distraction. Sure, there's commotion going on in the, the audience, but nonetheless, anybody watching needs to believe this is what we have planned. This is completely normal. You know, our our ex our ex officer isn't being fed information. Nobody should notice that. So I'm gonna really play it up. Yeah, no one is. This is exactly what this right here. What's going on right now is exactly what anybody should be paying attention to. Exactly. So, uh, so yeah. So you're going in with jabs. Uh, okay, we're not gonna say brawl because we don't want to get that close to uh, eclipse. So how about we do some melee combat then? Um, but um, but because of like the choice with it, we're gonna throw a bonus dice in there and we're gonna set that at your brawl amount. So for your for your melee combat, I see that as a D12. You're gonna set your bonus dice um, at a D10. Uh, for this, since, you know, you, Nero, he's been on, he's been on the streets. He understands yeah. how to tangle. Mm -hmm. All right. So would you say that what he's doing right now is normal or tricky for him or even challenging? I would say it's normal. There's something about having to posture a lot, especially in the streets. You know, it's you're like a peacock. It's just more about the show than it is about what you're actually doing. Excellent. Then uh, let's go ahead and set this at a nine. Uh, for him, making it the higher end of normal for the target result. Um, add your bonus dice of uh, the same amount um, as your brawl onto this. Perfect. And we will see what the dice say. Uh, All right, excellent. Just made it. <laughs> just made it. Hey, you know, uh, 
close enough for government work. Uh, it's still, uh, there's no asterisks on W. <laughs> so yeah, uh, tell me how this looks with like Nero uh, holding his own uh, with Eclipse, the submission expert, by also like not getting too close to her. Like most weird men, I feel like Nero does a lot of shadow boxing in his free time. Um, so he kind of like shadow boxes his way over to Eclipse and they're just like, he's just like throwing some jabs, but not really trying to do anything effective and just trying to like match her pace. Um, it looks really cool. It, in truth, like technically in terms of like technical MMA, it's not that cool. <laughs> Uh, that is exactly what's going on. And um, of the audience, let's say three fourths are looking over there, but there is like a fourth that's on the far side of the octagon that is still very much in the match. And with that, their attention then is on you and also Eclipse and are not really paying attention to what Crossroads is doing on the other side of them. So Excellent. definitely that is going hobo. Uh, what are you up to right now uh, in the octagon? So many things. Just kidding. Uh, so uh, is there, I know there's only two, or is, is there only two people that we're fighting or are there more than two? There's two people that you're fighting. That's what I thought. Um, are uh, Between the two of them, are either of their, uh, do they have an opening toward the bottom of their body, specifically their legs? Well, these are, these are, these are like humans. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. So I, so I want, I'm, with that, I want to make sure no one is like on top of these people, so that I can't. I wanted to like run and slide between their legs and see if I can yank at their ankles to get them down. Got it. I should have uh, just explained that to begin with. Sorry. Right now, not even. Uh, right now, uh, Crossroads, uh, which is your contact, uh, is uh, has an arm bar on Ritz Miller and has her mouth close to her ear and looks like she's imparting information while staring off like terrified for her friend um, off into the distance. Uh, Eclipse is completely focused on Nero right now as he jabs uh, and like shadow boxes around them. So if you want to go for someone, like you want to try to go for someone's legs, you can go for Eclipse. Or you can go for Crossroads if you want. Uh, um, you totally you can do uh, I'll do the one that isn't by the face of my ally. Uh, I believe it's Crossroads is the one that isn't by the face of the ally. Eclipse. Uh, Eclipse. Oh, it's Eclipse. Okay, then I'll go for Eclipse because I don't want to hurt yeah. my ally in any way. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'll just sure if it if it helps. Crossroads is uh, very very tall. Like we're we're talking oh, like, ample uh, leg space. Six two six three, uh, and then Eclipse has a lower uh, has a lower center of gravity. Uh, oh. We're talking five eight, maybe eh, more like five seven. Like okay. they're 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 down there and they're like, you know. Okay, then I will, since they're distracted, I will go for a flank and go between the legs and try to pull at the ankles to get them to be prone. Okay, so uh, for this, are you making this flashy or is this just, or is this just like down dirty brawl? Uh, probably more flashy than brawl. Okay, so let's do strength uh, athletics uh, then for your kind of making this, uh, making this more flashy then just all out. Okay, and well, target number? Out. Yes, uh, for this, since Eclipse is focused on Nero, and also because uh, it feels like Mama Sky likes to scrap. Like, <laughs> I don't think this is the first time that she's mm -mm. gone for someone's uh, ankles. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and set this at normal as well. Uh, on the higher end of normal, do nine. Uh, and we're gonna put a bonus dice on this. Uh, we're gonna, <laughs> let's see with your athletics is a D12. Okay, uh, let's say that this is an improvisation, but you know, we'll feel like you've been here before. So put a bonus dice of a D10 on that. So let's see what the dice have to say. Uh, it says number of bonus dice, so I just put one. You put one and then on Submit the drop down, put a D10 10. there. Boop, submit. Segment. Okay. All right. Okay. So with this, uh, you rolled an eleven, 
which uh, takes you out of, uh, that gives you degrees of failure. However, your bonus dice ended up being a four, which takes you uh, underneath. Uh, I am, this is gonna be a failure, but I'm going to flavor it uh, in the way that your bonus dice is hoping that this goes for you. Okay. So, <laughs> so uh, Mama Sky, and let's say in a flourish of, uh, there's some high kicks that are involved uh, with uh, being able to do the momentum of like high kick, high kick, momentum, then swing your body um, towards uh, Eclipse. Like you were trying to fake her out with going, you know, for the upper body and then at the last moment, like duck down to go near um, her, her knees and her legs. She always expects for people to try to sweep her off her feet of first course. in fact she hopes for it that is literally what she wants for to happen um in matches because she is a submission <laughs> expert she wants people to feel comfortable knocking her down and then she gets them me so too she goes, <laughs> she goes along with it she lets you in a controlled fall where she then falls on top of you and grips tight. You have succeeded and knocking her off her feet, she now has you uh, locked uh, in her grasp. Not good, <laughs> guys. <laughs> so it's, it's like degrees of failure, but also success. I mean, you did what you wanted to do. Uh, yeah. yeah did. <laughs> okay, so uh, Mephi and Ritz, you both have uh, turns at the same time. What would you like to do something together, or what is it that you would like to do? I'm just probably going to ask Crossroads another question. So, yeah, I feel like Mephi might see that question burning in Ritz's eyes, and will kind of like Mephi has been in a situation before where you have to, much like in wrestling pretend that something is like happening like doing the fate for for a friend where it's like oh i'll just like wound in or like oh well, yeah you you don't want that person to mess with you and i can see that and we've got that nonverbal contact yeah i'll just like come over but we'll see that uh eclipse is very dead set on uh possibly choking mama sky out We'll, well do that you know, where it's Eclipse, like, ah, oh, which do I choose? And yeah, then... Eclipse uh, hasn't had her turn yet, but it's coming up. Uh, now she has Mama Sky in her grasp. So uh, if Ritz yeah. is going to ask another question to Crossroads, uh, yeah. Mephi has a number of options, hyping up the crowd, going after Eclipse uh, is one, stepping closer to Ritz and Crossroads, uh, also another uh, option. So... I or think. even looking around at what's going on, uh, maybe getting the titian of Ao. There's a number of things. I think Mephi's trust in people just doing their jobs is high enough <laughs> that Mephi will be helping Mama Sky in the classic, oh, you have this person in a submission hold? I'll put you in a submission hold while they're in a submission yes. hold. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So Mephi is going to go for uh, Eclipse. Eclipse. I love this. I All believe right. in you. <laughs> so uh, is this a, uh, is this like an athletics thing where it's like making it a, mm -hmm. a bit flashy to wrap around Eclipse or is this like a straight brawl? Um, going forward, is this doing strikes um, at Eclipse while they uh, while she is uh, on top of Mama Sky? Uh, let me know what this looks like. Okay. Uh, I think it's gonna be flashy. Okay. Uh, but the first thing I'm gonna do, or the eventually it'll get flashier, but I'm gonna go for that that classic ankle log nice. to try and pull. At least, hopefully, pull her off of my, uh, the mouth of Mama Sky, and I, I hope I succeed. 
Okay. All right. So uh, looking at your strength stats, uh, we're going to do it like for flavor that since all of them are the same <laughs> level, we're going to do it for flavor for uh, going into an ankle lock to make Eclipse let go of Mama Sky. Um, so go ahead and you can roll any of your stats underneath the uh, strength. And, and let's say for this, I mean, you already in the first round, you're feeling yourself. Like Mephi already yeah. in the first round was able to just bring all of the Mephiness to literally awing <laughs> someone who was in a fight with you. So let's go ahead and also give you, we're gonna give you a, a bonus dice of a D8. Uh, on this, um, your target result. You've done this a lot in VR. Uh, however, this isn't necessarily the most normal thing for you. This is yeah. this is closer to tricky than it would be normal. So we'll do the higher end of tricky. Your target result is a seven. You're gonna put one bonus dice of D8 onto that. Uh, and you know what? For, uh, let's see how this turns out. Do one luck dice of a D4. Okay. Because if this doesn't work, Got then... this, Mephi. Let's see. What do we get here? Okay, 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 good. All right, cool. So you rolled a 10 on uh, your skill check. However, you rolled yeah. a six on bonus. Uh, for the target of seven right under, and then your luck dice was a one, which for this, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna flavor this as uh, fortuitous, but not in the way that you thought that it would be. So, yes, okay. Uh, Mephi, you, you do like a quick scan of, uh, of the octagon, like audience, you see who's paying attention. You see um, the audience is like not paying attention. And most importantly, you see Mama Sky and her face when she realizes that she's just been grappled by uh, the top rated uh, submission expert in, in, you know, in, in the MMA. So with that, you do this dive towards uh, Eclipse and you're specifically going uh, for her ankle. Eclipse, this is this is where she lives. Like she literally, when people are going for locks um, with her as opposed to high striking, in fact, the very reason why she's doing this event with um, Crossroads is because there are striking and she's submission. So someone going at her with another submission type role is where she lives. So what she ends up doing is she's like, okay, then she releases Mama Sky, uh, does a, it's, it's almost like a, like a kick move to then be face to face and now has you grasped. Mama Sky is still on her back, um, half covered by Eclipse's body, but now just her legs uh, while uh, Eclipse now has you like grasp like this. And the fourth of the audience that is watching is like, ah! <laughs> like, this is why we came here. We are entertained. Uh, Ritz, with this happening uh, with Mephi, uh, go ahead and ask your next question to Crossroads. Uh, everybody is distracted. Your teammates are, they're doing the thing. So while I'm going to ask my question, I'm also going to like struggle on the ground. So like just a bit of a performance to make it look like I'm in a bit of a pickle. Um, and I'm going to ask like, what's the data like Luan has what is the data I don't know I just know that it's bad I know that it has to do with Longbridge Air and Space and the Windsors because literally that is what he told me I know that the only person and he I don't think he even meant to tell me about Nyx I don't think he did but I know that that is the only person that I know that has a direct location with him. They sounded close. And at that, you hear like a little bit of jealousy enter uh, Crossroads' voice. Oh. Um, and she also gives you the information. Um, they're after him. They're after him. 
they Tuesday. know and they want to kill him. I'm sure of it. They're probably here tonight. And I know that the data that he has, it isn't just something that can be passed off in a drive. He has it up here. And that's why they're trying to kill him. You have to stop this. Uh, do I have time to ask another question or? Uh, we'll see for your order. You've got, yeah, we've got another round. Okay, cool. Okay, so next round is up. What dice are we doing? So Nero, you've got your three that you can use. Mephi, you have your one. Uh, Ritz, three. And Hobo, it looks like you've got your one as well. So Mephi and <laughs> Mephi and Mama Sky can go yeah. at the same time <laughs> when it comes back around to your turn. Cause right now it is Crossroads turn. Uh, and with Crossroads turn with uh, Ritz, uh, what else? What else do you need to save Luan? Is that me? Uh, and yeah. while while she's saying yeah. this, she then clumsily, somewhat clumsily, but still she's an athlete, puts you yeah. in another submission move. Yeah, cool. Um, if we need your, if we need help, if we need your help in the future, can we count on you? No. Okay. I don't, I have a lot of love for Luan. I'm not going to get involved with the Windsors. Can I say that this, that um, Crossroads is scared by this? Yeah, this is okay. big. This is, this yeah. is definitely an above her pay, pay grade. Type yeah, of so for an MMA fighter being scared by this, this is a big thing. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, especially a highly rated one. Like she has fans, she has she has swing. For her mm. to then be like, no, I've given, I, I will give you whatever information you need, but I this is as far as I go. That says a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So that is Crossroads turn, which leads us to the audience, and also Eclipse now has her turn. So. Uh, Eclipse has Mephi uh, uh, in her grasp, and uh, honestly, this is like, she's she's going to focus on who she has underneath her. Yeah, yeah, she is. Okay, so this is going to be normal for her. Not only that, she's specifically trained. She has some of the best equipment available for being a highly trained and she is going for, no, no luck dice with this. This is normal for her. And let's see what the dice say. Okay. Yep. All right. So, Eclipse has Mephi uh, within within her grasp, and this this is like rudimentary MMA when it comes to someone of her caliber of where she is right now. Uh, she's rolled a seven, and uh, her bonus dice was an ace. Mephi, it is like an explosion of pain. Actually, let me let me look at your equipment real oh, quick. No, got a sleeve. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, this is this is a synthetic sleeve. So, um you know, keeping you're not gonna a, be bruised tomorrow or anything? No, no, no. This is happening to a different body than your own. <laughs> like this is uh think think of like a all of this is happening to you, but it is happening to uh, a sleeve that is not your own. Uh not only that, it is happening to a synthetic sleeve, which is different from having a natal or a birth sleeve. It's like um the way that pain registers is different. Uh, than than anything else. So, Mephi with your... Is that... Usually I would do this opposed, but having an ace on that bonus dice, that just kind of tipped it over. Okay, but you have a, a carbon fiber skeleton that gives you a defense of a plus one. You also have a, 
Uh, bludgeoning, she's not bludgeoning you. Um, oh, okay, here, we, we can do this. Parry is allowed on unarmed attacks. Plus one damage on Brawl. Okay. Let's see. Do, do, do. Okay, so we... I'll, 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 uh, for taking in the fact that it is a synthetic sleeve, um, and that you can, in a sense, try to parry this, uh, instead of doing a, having to do an unopposed and you possibly, and having to have you at, like, disadvantage with that because you are grappled right now, instead I'm gonna lessen her ace, uh, a bit to then, like, balance this out. If you had, if you had been in your original body, uh, for this fight in the octagon, there is, there, there, there would have been complications, uh, involved with, uh, <laughs> doing this with Eclipse. She locks your arm and your knee, uh, together where it's like a chicken wing, but it's your leg going up and it's going in the wrong direction. So you you are literally like on the mat this is kind of a shock that this happened so quickly uh you can for your next turn if you want try to break this grapple or somebody else can try to uh break it for you but uh eclipse it has done this and keeping in mind like with this for the amount of time that you're in the octagon it's who's on top with the most points for um for moves made and this is a really big thing that eclipse has just managed to do so now eclipse and crossroads are ahead and you are about halfway through this round and this is like this is a big ahead when it comes to to points wise so uh that is what she is up for let's see if the audience is still distracted the rest of the audience Okay. The rest of the audience is still uh, looking off uh, into the distance. You have the fourth that are really paying attention. The the rest are still looking off. Um, does anyone want to give me a perception roll? Yep. Yeah. Go ahead and give me a perception. Anyone who wants to do it. Perception of, let me see here. Search? Would I be a little bit distracted? <laughs> consider. Yeah, I, I think maybe Mephi uh, wouldn't necessarily do this role yeah. of uh, perception. We'll look uh, for you. <laughs> let's do perception detection um, with this because you aren't actively trying to search. This is literally just something. This is almost like passive perception that you're that you might notice something because there's a lot going on in the octagon. So anybody What's else our target to number? Um, oh, this is, this is, this is challenging. Uh, this is, uh, five. There's a lot going on for you. So target result of five, mm -hmm. no bonus dice, uh, no luck dice with it. This is literally just seeing what's, seeing Well, what I'll have you know I'm a detective and uh, I can see the eyes <laughs> real well. Holy crap. I'm distracted. Yes. <laughs> I love that so much. Okay, uh, Ritz, you are involved with, uh, the information exchange that's going on yeah. with, uh, with Crossroads. Um, Mama Sky, you looking over the bodies of uh, of Eclipse and Mephi uh, as Mephi's mouth is like open, like uh, she's about to scream <laughs> uh, kind of a thing. Um, but you're able to right before that moment is about to happen. Um, look over into the crowd. Nero, you uh, look over into the crowd and you see that there is a bigger disturbance than there was before. Uh, is what Mama Sky uh, notices um, with the uh, the angle of bodies. Nero, you are placed in a better um, POV than anybody else because you are uh, you're standing like you were shadow boxing with Eclipse, but now that Eclipse has been taken care of, you're kind of like you're looking around, you're looking at the crowd, and then like you're able to see right where the disturbance is. You see that uh, the fight that broke out over there. Now somebody has pulled out a gun. Um, that gun is like pointed up into the air uh, uh, simultaneously, like also like kind of being waved around um, by a, an individual that has dressed for the occasion, but has a, that brought a gun to like this, uh, you know, invite only party. 
um, and is waving around at uh, the other people that were, uh, that it looks like they were about to start fighting. Um, the previous person that was on their portable throne is gone, like they, they peaced out. Uh, and now, you know, it looks like from this person pulling a gun, it looks like from what you can read from the body language, because you rolled an ace, you got a one on this. Um, from what you can tell of the body language of the other people involved, that it looks like pulling that gun is about to break away what the fight was going to be. Like, it looks like um, that gun pull was just like, okay, you know what? No. In fact, um, over the crowd of screams, you're able to see one of the people that was about to like go to fisticuffs, uh, literally screaming aloud <laughs> at this gun <laughs> being pulled and backing away. So okay. it looks like that distraction will not be happening for long. It looks like it is resolving itself um, right now. So y'all are on limited time for people not coming back around to notice what you're up to in the octagon. Could I ask that with my ace and as I'm kind of like scanning the, uh, the, the, the crowd, do I notice any two figures in uh, official wear that I might have encountered earlier in the market? Yeah, uh, huh, you mean market? the 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 hoodlums uh, yeah. that were looking for uh, were looking for the spy previously? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, when you are looking out into the crowd and you see um, that there are people that are backing away, uh, those two that you saw, one of them standing next to the person that's screaming, is is uh, uh, being pawed at to back away. Okay. Good to see them, though, you know? <laughs> Perfect. Okay. All uh, right. And uh, the audience is sufficiently distracted. Uh, Eclipse uh, is making Mephi sing. Uh, and... All right. Okay. All right. Crossroads uh, also has a one to go at the same time as Mephi and Hobo. Uh, she is not doing something with, well, she. Can, what What do the two of you have planned? Uh, Mephi, Mephi and uh, Mama Sky can go, you can go at the, at the same time. Mephi, you are in a lock. Like, she, she got you, girl. Is she on top of Mephi? Like, Mephi's on the bottom? She's on top, Mephi's on bottom. I was gonna say, or uh, is there a possibility where I could arm lock her so she can let go of Mephi? You can try it. Ah, uh, is that what is that all right, Mephi? Yeah. Yeah, we'll try, <laughs> try to get her off off of you. I feel like you're way more charismatic than I am when it comes to talking to people. Uh, okay, then let's do that. I'm assuming it would be brawl. Yes, that is okay. definitely a brawl. Uh, this is literally you just sitting up and trying to put someone in a lock. So we're not going to make this tricky. We will make this normal. I will put okay. this at the, at the higher end of normal. Go ahead and put this at a nine. You will not get any bonus dice with this, but I want you to do a one D four luck dice. Um, Mephi, what is it that you are, you're wanting to do since this, since this happens at the, uh, the same time as, uh, Mama Sky? Well, I was going to try and beat an eclipse to help Mama Sky out, but, uh... You are grappled right now, so also keep that in yeah. mind with what your intention is. You can try um, to break the grapple, for instance. Yeah, it would have been to try and break the grapple by, like, punching at, uh... I'm assuming it's an arm that's holding. Like, yeah, like yeah, that. no, it's, it's her arm that has, like, um... It's like your your leg is gripped um, in her hand uh, and she's pulled that forward down to the back of your thigh uh, to like lock in your your ankle and then also your knee. Like she's got that braced like this. If I in, in my head, this makes sense okay. and I realize it might not be true. No, no, uh, I realize there's something else I can do, but not if Mama Sky is there. And definitely not if she's rolled in haste. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't know, so I would try it anyway. Uh, I would probably try to go for like an octopus fold, take my free leg, swing it up around behind her neck. Ooh, 
and then try and turn myself upside down to Trevor and look. Yes. I love this. I love this so much. Okay. So are you, this feels brawly to me. Um, yeah. Let me see if that's where you're thinking with it. Um, I very, I very much love this. I was trying to make it a little bit more like, Mephi is trying to approach this the way you would like a ball. Oh. Where you're trying to maneuver, at, at least this part, a Almost ball like mixed a... with like the VR experience. So it's a dance. Mephi should oh. come out of this okay <laughs> in the okay. end. But there might be there might be some bruises. No, it's just a tangle of bodies. Nobody knows what they're looking at anymore. <laughs> but <laughs> people are watching. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So like that that swing around and down should like look at least more artful. Right. At least in okay. my head then. Okay. I, I I'm I'm envisioning this and I love it. I need to know I need to know how this what the dice say with this. Uh so Mephi, go ahead and roll uh we're gonna do more of an athletics with this then uh, because it's you're doing this like approaching this in like a dance type of way and a lot of athleticism is just like ugh, it's it's like it's beautiful poetry in motion kind of a thing um we'll go ahead and say that this is we'll say that mephi has uh, some muscle memory when it comes to doing moves like this with her thrill kill uh her thrill kill simulations so go ahead and let's put this on the lower end of normal. So your target result is going to be an eight. Uh, we're not going to bonus dice you this time, but I want you to do a luck dice 1d4 with this. And we'll see what the dice have to say. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I know exactly how this goes now. All right, so uh, Mama Sky uh, with uh, the role uh, originally got an ace um, with her uh, going for an arm lock uh, around Eclipse. And then uh, with uh, Mephi, they hit the target uh, for rolling an eight. And then also their luck dice was a one, which um, is like a stroke of luck. It's like, as long as you hit the skill check and you get a one and not a four on your D4, then it's like, this is the lucky thing that you needed to happen. And actually, um, both of you working together in this way, let's just say Eclipse was about to do some shit. Um, with this, like, it's, it's almost like the both of you are just on the same wavelength where it's like we, you're not even, actually, Mephi might be interested in still winning the match. <laughs> um, but it's, literally we have got to get her off of Mephi. she's about to do something that you know at a certain point enough damage can happen to a body that psychologically it can you know come back with you when you get into your own body depending on what's being done so with mama sky just rearing up and clenching this beautiful arm lock hold it's, it's like she's going back to her younger days of being scrappy and hungry when she was starting to build mama sky empire uh and she like locks that in enough where eclipse like uh just like in a flash moment of being startled then uh re not releases but just enough uh is let go of um Mephi's ankle to where then she uh, is able to rear up and that same leg lock that around the back of Eclipse's head and combined effort with Mama Sky and Mephi is then flips Eclipse to where they are both on top of her with Mama Sky uh, holding her in that arm lock and Mephi uh, holding her in the octopus lock. And the crowd cannot get enough of that. That is nuts. And that does not happen. Um, at the same time as the crowd being distracted by this huge uh, upset that just happened with Eclipse, uh, Crossroad looks at you, Ritz, uh, at the same time that this is happening. You can go ahead and use her turn to ask another question. 
Oh, goodness. Either that um, or there is information that she can impart to you. Just shake her and say, yeah. tell me what you know! <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, so I'm going to keep, like, struggling, of course, and, like, give out a bit of a shout to make it look like I'm in a bit of pain. Um, <laughs> like, oh, no. Like, how, how do you know Luan? <laughs> I met him at a match. And oh. uh, he came backstage. It's... Do you know the thing about Luan? It's literally like he is living, he's living the life that all of us wish that we could live. Like who comes up to someone after they finish and they win a championship belt and then is able to talk them up? It's like he's his life is literally someone else's dream come true. It impressed I, me. Um. There a bit of like a, a bit of like a feeling there, like a a romantic attraction. It was short-lived, short but passionate. Okay, cool. He's my friend now, but not a good enough friend for me to go further than this. Okay. I looked. I looked up the name Nix, by the way. That's how I got the address. N Y X, last name Cartwright. Here, I can give you this. Uh, and uh, Crossroads then um, out of her unitard uh, that she's wearing, pulls out a small drive and uh, clasp that in your hand as she then does a uh, kind of like a, um, what is it? What is it called? A firehouse kick or a football kick um, into your chest, propelling you on the other side oh, of uh, the okay. octagon away from her. Okay. Yeah, literally oh. you, I mean, you as a sleuth, you know that that's more than likely because that's all the information that she has to give to you. Yeah. And that whatever else there is, is in that drive that she gave okay, you. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and uh, the, the crowd seeing that, is like Wah! and there are more points on eclipse and uh crossroads side okay cool okay uh and eclipse is up eclipse that is uh <laughs> being grappled right now by the both of you Let's see here <laughs> A double lock. I love that y'all did this. Oh my gosh. Well, obviously, uh, what she is going to try to do is that she's going to try to break this lock. Has she been in a double lock before? Well, she does some specialty mat matches. Um, she's going to break out of this. Mm, yeah, we're going to do melee combat with her. This is all, this is a little outside of her wheelhouse. So while it's normal, we'll still just do it as a target number of eight. This is what she's built for. She's, this is a D6. Like this is what she's built her body to do. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. You know what? We'll, we'll go ahead and luck. We'll go ahead and luck dice her. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Her bonus dice uh, gets it. Um, her target um, hit. Well, she hit the target. She has a stroke of luck and her bonus dice went underneath it. This is an all around um, success of what she's doing here. Okay. So. Oh, no. Y'all, I know you have her in an octopus lock, but it's like she's an octopus. It's, it's like she is literally everywhere right now. Um, breaking that arm lock, breaking the uh, octopus lock, because uh, this is a stroke of luck. So she breaks completely from both of you and then also does this like flip move to like uh, backpedal uh, backwards uh, to where she is now up and standing next to crossroads, looking, looking over at her like, where were you? 
uh, kind of a deal, sees that uh, one of the combatants is on the other side of the octagon, um, that she has two that are down in front of her that she was tangling with, and then also sees Nero, uh, who's uh, standing there and has been surveilling uh, the crowd and now and now it's like standing over here and now she's focused on crossroads. They're, they're ahead in points. The match is just about to end. Uh, and she like looks over at everybody. She's not flexing now. It's just kind of like the, the era of this got weird. What is going on? Like that's where Eclipse is when uh, she ends. For the audience, Okay, so for the audience, more of them are paying attention to what's going on in the octagon now. Um, this has been broken up that's uh, over there and it looks like everybody's going to their separate ways. So before there was only a fourth of the audience that was on the far side of the octagon. Now it's like at least half of the audience is paying more attention to what's going on in the ring. Um, the time is ticking down for this headlining event. Um, they're realizing that they missed a lot of things because of whatever was going on over there, but now they are starting to pay attention and that is where the audience uh, is right now, which leads us to the end of this round. We have Nero and also Ritz um, at threes. Ritz, you're on the other side of the octagon. You just got, yeah, uh, football kicked <laughs> uh, to the other side. You know that Eclipse and Crossroads are up in points. Nero, you are very aware of what's going on with uh, everything. Time is uh, ticking down for the end of the round. What, and both of you are going at the same time. What would you like to do? Crack his fingers. You know, when I was a wee, uh, wee child, I, I really wanted to do this one move. Uh, and uh, Nero wants to roundhouse kick, but grapple with his legs at the same time and take mm. crossroads down. Oof. Nice. Okay. I don't know what the name is. Call that the her <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Call that the Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I kind of love that. <laughs> Calling it the Black Widow. She got all those <laughs> legs and they just go flailing. Oh my gosh. But yeah, no, uh, I mean, Allie had it. But um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I kind of want to call it the Black Widow. How to rename it at D&D. &D well, there was, there was a wrestler that would do a Hurricanrana into an octopus hole that was called the Black Widow. Yes! That <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. It's your random wrestling fact of the day. I love uh, that. I love it. Oh, I live for that. Uh, yeah, so I'm for for that and just literally what that is. Um, I'm feeling athletics uh, with that Nero. All right. Uh, okay, so Ritz, you're going at the same exact time. Uh, what what would you like to do here? Um, I want to kind of jog towards crossroads. I want to kind of go for like a a fake jab to then basically grab over my shoulder and try to like use my body weight to flip them on the ground and then try to put them into um, a bit of like a choke hold with my leg. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. All right. Well, both of you are gonna be trying to do this at the same time. <laughs> These are very different moves um, that, uh, you know, speaking physics cannot be done at the same time they will not aid each other with what you're yeah. doing so uh i'm gonna have you both roll since both of you are trying to do such opposing moves uh that is gonna take you into the challenging uh target result for both of you okay mm -hmm. okay so uh this will be a five for both of you for target result uh nero you are going for athletics ritz uh you're you're not doing athletics with with your move you are doing let's see here brawl uh, brawl brawl is the closest um to go with this because you're you're literally trying to just like grapple to then uh yeah it's not yeah, it's not it's split. not athletics like other moves have been so okay. yeah so both of you challenging is set at five mm-hmm <laughs> and both of you give me one d4 luck dice. Okay. <laughs> oh, 
I kick Miller. <laughs> Okay. I'm dead. No. Oh, no, no, no. You know what? Um, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, Nero ended up rolling a six, which gives uh, you know degree of failure on top of the target of five. Uh, and Ritz rolled an eight uh, on top of the target of five. So the luck dice doesn't come mm -hmm. into play for the simple fact that um, the skill Way check out. the skill check didn't come into underneath. So um, this this actually goes. These are MMA fighters. This is literally what they do. Um, what you do with like clues and, and figuring out things on the street and, and being able to get information from people that don't want to give you information, that is what you specialize in. They specialize in utilizing their bodies as a, uh, a lethal weapon. And that is literally what happens when <laughs> both of you <laughs> try going for crossroads. Crossroads sees uh, Nero flying towards them, sees Ritz uh, bounce back off the cage of the octagon to then like try to run behind them. <laughs> and literally Crossroads just like plants herself uh, mm -hmm. and is and strikes out at both of you with like quick jabs. It's, it's like, a, well, not even jabs. We'll say like a jab in a roundhouse. Um, like the jab goes to Nero, who's directly in front of her to like plant and, and put you down. And then the roundhouse happens to Ritz, who is literally rounding around. So then it's a swing. Um, <laughs> also falling down on the ground, Eclipse looks over and is like, yes, finally. Uh, and then that is the end of the <laughs> <laughs> More bodies Sick. on the ground. Yeah. Let the buddies hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, the crowd, all of the crowd now realizes that not only was the fight happening, but now the fight is over. Uh, the headliners won. This is what people did expect <laughs> to also happen. Um, uh, let's, I believe that, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the end of the round. Um, so for the people, uh, they're like, ah, Eclipse, cross ropes. Eclipse, crossroads, you know, and uh, and uh, Ao is there. We're like, oh, <laughs> like uh, off, off to the, off to the side, and and like checks and is like looks like everybody's breathing great, <laughs> and like ducks out to then go and look at the crowd to to make sure that uh, well, ducks back out to see that everything's going on with that. Um, as uh, each of you like pick yourselves uh, back up to go back to your pods. Um, Oh, I almost want to do a damage thing for Ritz. We're we're gonna we're gonna because you did do it. Your, yeah. You know what? I just let's let's because you did keep your original body with this. I just want to oh, yeah. see what the dice are, are going to say for this. Um, let's do. Give me a strength toughness check. That was a very mm -hmm. solid roundhouse but you've been punched in the face before so we're gonna do this um as a normal give me a target result of an eight with this and um, where it's like you got like no bonus dice no luck dice let's just see what the dice say with uh your toughness target result of eight i'm okay. not good today <laughs> Yeah, you you definitely felt that there there was always going to be a uh, uh, Ritz ended up rolling a nine um, with this. There was always going to be uh, an amount of you know oh. you use your own body, you use your own body. There's 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 some stuff that is going to to happen with doing that. Don't worry, it's not a health point loss. It's not a health point loss. You know, there's there's a distinction when um, characters take wounds and then mm -hmm. when they actually lose health points. And if okay. you would like, um, you have a number of stack points right now. If you want mm -hmm. me to just completely zero out um, any damage that you are that you would take right now, you can just use some of your stack points. Um, and so, tell you what. Right. To just yeah. zero this out, um, just go ahead and give me uh, two stack points. You've got 30. You've got yeah, yeah, easy. 
Yeah, just go ahead so, and give me two stack points. Within changing that, it'll change everything else, won't it? Uh, no, your stack points are located uh, underneath your sleuth. And in fact, everybody on your character sheet, you have a number of stack points that we have left to you for you to be able to tweak um, other things. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we can chat more about that. Uh, let's do that during our week break to be able to tweak your characters more for yeah, like cool. going into more of the adventure. Um, but with this, I'm going to cancel out your damage that I was going to do for those stack points. <laughs> So uh, yeah, you've taken you've taken many hits to the face. It's like, uh, oh, this was gonna happen. You knew it's just what what you gonna do? Is one of one of the emergent? I, I knew I was gonna get hurt to some extent. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you you prepped yourself for it, and uh, that's why you were able to like uh, zero out the damage. Uh, all of you go back to your your pods. Um, Ritz, you have that data of everything that you need to know Nix and including an address that you're very certain of that nobody else has to be able to have a direct Lu uh, a direct uh connection with luan so if y'all decide to head to the canals after this you will go to Nix's um secret home address mm. uh and with that we are going to take a five minute break Woo! as the crowd goes wild, <laughs> as Eclipse and Crossroads stand with their accolades. Um, as you put up a heck of a fight, all of you did. All of Moment. you did. I think Nira would clap uh, Miller on the back. I reckon that wasn't too bad. You've probably taken a foot to the face before. I've eaten dirt many a times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you put up a good fight. You did too, which is weird, but oh, it was good. It's thank good, you. Good feel. Of though. all people, he's I'm not impressed. one to, to be good at fighting. <laughs> <laughs> You've got like a princess down here. You've got a brothel. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> Y'all are the ones pulling out the best moves. <laughs> yeah. It's only because I know the names of them. <laughs> Do a bit of like a bit of a side eye to like Beffy and be like, that was that went really well. Like, I was impressed. Yeah. Doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we're if we're already back in our original bodies, and if he's already checking news feeds to oh make sure that like <laughs> none of our faces are related to this news of what happened, just mm -hmm. because um, Mephi knows you keep the your only face person out, that would have been related to it is Ritz, because everybody yes. else was in a synthetic sleeve. Yeah, but no. I make sure if there's any pictures, no one has any, that the sleeves were different enough that no one could connect them if Get they were too hood. close to what anyone looked like. <laughs> Sunglasses. Yeah. Sunglasses, a hood, mustache, you'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Mephi, you do get a, a notification uh, from Angelique and it's like, is this you? <laughs> and there's and like, the message back is just like, you know what to do. Yeah. You know nothing. You know, you're going and knows your moves. Yeah. The message back to Angelique is just, you know what to do. Oh. And that's like to make sure that there's no connections, that no one knows. <laughs> this has probably I... happened in a less violent way before. Excellent. Uh, yes, and I just want to remind everybody in chat right now, go ahead and um, enter the giveaway. You can have a, was it a, the Stealth Dice MK2 from Level Up Dice. Uh, there's also the Altered Carbon PDF, and it's uh, exclamation point level up or exclamation point giveaway. Our mods are incredible, and they will let you know if it's not that. And we are going to take a break, and we will be back in five minutes. We'll continue the hunt for Luan and Nyx then. We're coming, Luan. <laughs> We're and welcome back to our second half of, uh, yes, of episode two of Birmingham Uprising uh, here at Hunters Entertainment. Uh, this is an ongoing campaign uh, that will last for April. This is the uh, last episode that we'll have before a week break. Uh, next week at this time, and by that I mean 1 p.m. PT, you will be able to catch up 
um, on the two episodes before then, before we go into our last two concluding episodes of episode three and four, there's a number of things that it's well worth replaying and then also getting uh, community conspiracies of things that can happen. And not only that, this is a dual campaign that happens with the Level Up Dice. You can go to twitch.tv slash level up underscore TTV uh, for Thursdays, 1 p.m. They will also be replaying next week so that we can catch up on the conspiracy on the movements and revolutions that are happening within Birmingham uprising at that time. So to bring us back and also there's a giveaway there's there's a giveaway our mods are amazing <laughs> thank you so much our, our mods for, for saying the giveaway the giveaway is happening you have to watch to be able to enter so you're watching so yes make just make sure you enter <laughs> so um you have that uh data drive that uh, Crossroads has given you. Also, there is no attention on you right now. If you want to go to a different place to go ahead and go over that, uh, you feel more than free to. You know where your ultimate location of um, is with Nix's home address. Well, after that, I am rather peckish. So if we, I, I know there's like really good ramen bar nearby if you guys want to like oh go there. i love nudes i love them exactly right mm -hmm. and we'll uh we'll debrief i've got some information i got a lot of information out of crossroads so oh. i think yeah so i think if we go oh. there we can eat refresh a little bit and then i can give you guys some info guess we ganged up on the wrong person <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna um, go grab a, a drink. I can't remember my favorite drink, but I'm definitely gonna go grab whiskey. One relief. Yeah, thank you, Mama. I knew you would remember. <laughs> I remember all, everyone's pleasures. <laughs> well, I feel like a ramen bar isn't exactly the most secure place, so we can always go back to one of my places. Places? You got multiple? Don't can you? we order delivery? Yeah, as long as there's food, I think involved. <laughs> of course. And I like I follow the car around. Angelique is already getting messages. Like, have the chef prepare some like ramen, which would probably be a very nice and French take on it. Uh, Le Ramon. A lot of bottle. Okay, Mephi, uh, I'm gonna have you use one of your influence points on this. You have a lot, so don't worry. You've got some... you. You have a lot. So... Don't worry. <laughs> We're going to use one of your influence points to call in this favor of uh, going going ahead and having everybody chauffeured over to um, your ramen. Well, let's say it's, maybe it's a restaurant that doesn't necessarily do ramen. They literally get yes. someone in that does ramen at somewhere else yeah. for Fancy. you to be able to have it at this place. Uh, yeah, this place is uh, normally a, a nice farm to table restaurant. I don't know where the farm is, but there's a farm. I also <laughs> own that. Like, uh, there's nice high shelf wines, like liquor, every everything you could ever want. But also, if any information like happens to be like, like if you plug in a USB, I should also have that information if I ever wanted to pass it off to someone. Ooh, interesting. Ooh. Okay. I don't mention that, but okay. yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mephi's slick. Mephi knows. Okay, so we're we're not gonna place this at the hub, which is very well. That's very um, and that that might flashy. Be more, that might be more influence points than we want to <laughs> spend uh, to get there. Let's say that this is located in. Oh well, you know what? We'll put this in Diamond Mile. You know, Diamond Mile is a little way west of the hub, uh, close enough to benefit from the grandeur, the restaurants, the bars, yeah. performance spaces. But also, we're we're in the very nicest section of the Diamond of the Diamond Mile uh, with this uh, restaurant that Mephi has uh, called in a favor in to then be able to uh, have you in a a very intimate secret room in the back to be able to discuss what you are going to be doing next. Uh, Angelique is uh, also there um, at, if you need, 
uh, anything. Well, if Mephi needs anything, <laughs> uh, Angelique is there uh, as she as she stands, uh, uh, prim and uh, composed, uh, looks around at everybody else, and then smiles at Mephi, uh, and then uh, stands off to the side, and she has her own uh, glass of wine that she's enjoying. Uh, so about that whiskey, <clears throat> malt whiskey, I believe. Uh, thing that you Mephi want is has been delivered to you. It's just much nicer. <laughs> I've never seen this bottle before in my life. This is a hundred uh, years old. <laughs> yes, uh, it was actually made about uh -huh. a year before my birth, uh -huh. and it was supposed to be a gift from one of the uh, Suntory. The still oh, no. yeah, it's oh. uh, nice. Yeah, th that's why. Sun Suntory, it is uh it is another country which I doubt that you have been to. I'm sorry, I will not say anything, Mephi. You give your heart is so big. I do not like her. I'm not saying that out loud, but I am giving her an eye. <laughs> uh, uh, Angelique uh, deserves it. <laughs> yeah. Rude. Do I do I have my bowl of ramen? Yeah. Uh, you definitely have what you Oh, have. I am so in on that, and I'll just be like just give me a second, like, <laughs> just, just wait, I've just, I got a lot, i got a lot. I'm just gonna, like, Goodness. get through, like, and then I'm just gonna, like, finish the bowl and put it down and put it to the side and be like, wow, all right, so, I got this, and I'm gonna, like, pull out a USB stick. Are we oh, my God. Talk about a data, a data stick. Seconds? How did you do that? <laughs> that was really impressive. Yeah. Do you want a job? Uh, in, in a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I've been stood down. I might need one. Who knows? <laughs> she fought in her best sleeve. It's just, it's okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that makes sense. Truly. Uh, but information. You got. You got details. <laughs> so much. Uh, data stick. Um, I have Nix's location. Nix. So Nix is connected to Luan. Um, oh my gosh, there's so much. Okay, I'm gonna like <laughs> settle myself in. All right, Luan. So, no, I don't know. I don't know what, which way do I start? Like, there's just there's so much. There's so oh. much. Um, okay, Crossroads and Luan. Uh -huh. I had a thing. Okay, what? short love, short lived, passionate, what? completely not a part of the story. But I need to let you know about this because it was real cute. Anyway. I'm a little um, jealous, but all right. Well, interesting you say that because Crossroads was also a little bit jealous about this Nyx character. Oh. So, what I so we have to go see Nyx. Nyx is the closest person apparently to Luan. I, I don't know Luan. All I know is Luan has answers, right? So, in order uh, to find Luan. Like to just clear yeah, it real quick, it. Um, uh, Crossroads was jealous of Luan. Uh, Crossroads felt like Luan was was living everybody's dream and wondered how like oh, okay, Luan yeah. and Nyx were connected um, because uh, the when Luan brought up Nyx, it was almost like um, it's almost like how you bring up an idol. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. So I just wanted to to clarify that because I might not have made that clear before. No, that's so good. That's so good. Um, Nyx is the closest person uh, attached to Luan that is important enough for Luan to go there as like a place of safety. So I th Nyx is going to be the best person to help us find Luan, no matter where they are right now. I got I, I don't know who this Nyx person is, and I thought that Luan and I had something special. I... Oh, honey. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna like put my like hand on like Nero's shoulder and be like, we've all been there. We've all been there. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's Nix. We gotta go meet Nix. And then what? What is on this data drive? I I, I don't know. I I'm just gonna like just <laughs> leave it on the table for anyone to kind of grab and uh, just be like, I'm not plugging nothing. it in. I don't wanna. I don't want anything from this. Uh, who who out of here? Clubs? Who out of here wants gets... to do a data analysis on it? Ooh. 
uh, who, who, more like who's the better person to do it. So, so at that, you got a d10. Yeah, I also kind of have job. a d10, but could I call someone trustworthy to do it? Uh, you know, you have a lot yeah, of influence points. Yeah, I've got a d10 points. also. You have a lot of influence points. If you want to use an influence points to call in a trusted outside uh, data analysis, we can go that route. You would spend another one. I do want to let everyone know the influence points that you have. These are these are big deals. Calling in a favor. Uh, you also will not get any more for this campaign. Just <gasps> oh. oh my god! <laughs> Talk oh. about how much influence I don't have. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go check that now. Yep. We're Dirty tight. cops. No. More animals. Dirty cops don't get influence. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh. Yeah, the just just so we can do uh, influence points real quick. It's uh, calling in a favor. Um, you can make a request from uh, like a, a network that your character would be connected with. Uh, you can also uh, do something to give modifiers for the group. You know, like using your influence points to be like, hey, so let's let's all get bonus dice um, on this particular thing. Like that's that's what you can do with uh, influence Ooh. points. We'll, we'll make it narratively fit. Okay. Uh, uh, along with that, it's uh, getting equipment. You can use um, influence points with uh, with that. Uh, another way is to uh, temporarily, temporarily, mind you, assume narrative control of the story. <gasps> that's huge. Whoa! Yeah, these are these Whoa. are big deals. That's why yeah. that's why not a lot of people have them. But then there's the haves and the have nots. Is there? Is, is it like part of this story? Is this kind of like? A wish spell in a way? Not completely a wish spell. Think of it Not more as powerful like a, as a wish spell. UX Machina. Think of it more hmm. in that realm of things. I wow. feel powerful. <laughs> so if you yeah. want to call in a I feel times spell. three powerful. <laughs> oh man. All right, Maffy, you want to look into this? You're holding on to your phone. I know you always hold on to it, but this is secure information that I do not think we should be, uh... I agree. Mm-mm. Going to anybody, fool? Uh, this is- this is me thinking, like... <laughs> okay, yeah, so frozen a joke about Mephi thinking um, too hard. Uh, okay. I mean, you- um, you do- Mephi does- you would have, um, let's see here. You would have five more influence points. That's more than likely more than you need for yeah. this campaign. And I have a couple as well. Yeah. I'm gonna um, order another bowl of ramen. <laughs> <laughs> so if Mephi wants to to use this, I, I can have a yeah. um a, a data uh, analyst that Mephi trusts come in. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and spit. I'm not gonna hold on to all my potions like I do in every other game. Uh -huh. And then there's influence points. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, uh, I'll just to go. Uh have them over here as soon as possible. Oh baby, Mademoiselle Murphy. Of course, whatever you need is what I will make happen for you. Uh, there is a trusted uh, data analyst, and I shall have them come. It is. Mm, it will probably have to be in a holographic form, and I am sorry for that. I'm sorry that it will not be in person, uh, but the information will be conveyed, yes? This should work, yes, yeah. Uh, and, and, it would um, be better to have them in person so that... Network, so nothing can I will make it happen. I will get them here. I will somehow get Just them here. Make sure everything's secure, my dear. <laughs> I, I will have them come within the hour before that one finishes a third bowl of ramen. I oh. shall have. <laughs> Better watch your finger pointing, Missy. I shall have your data analysis here. Thank you. And then, like, Angelique looks back at Mama Sky, like, mm. <gasps> <gasps> Uh, so, 
Mephi, we didn't exactly agree to this. You're just kind of going about doing <laughs> We did things. not agree to this. Uh, well, did you have a better plan? Uh, do you not? know what they plan? I do not, but I've got some skills in that. You know, I gotta <laughs> survive the way I do. What we is the worst need that the could happen? best of the best. And I trust them with, well, not my life. I trust no one with my life. But I trust them enough with a sleeper three. Uh, Thank what you about. And Angelique bounces out the room. Ugh. Yeah, you best be stepping. <laughs> Where did you find her? I do her not family has worked for my family for generations. Hmm. She's got a Might lot be. of attitude. Yeah. It's helpful in certain situations. That I understand. I didn't, I didn't notice her. Um, <laughs> hey, we're too busy knee deep in soup. <laughs> Yes, Sometimes the yes I am. <laughs> when the broth start, you just can't stop. Um, uh, yes. Another thing I should let you guys know while I'm like wiping like my face. Uh, Luan, the data that Luan has stolen, I'm not sure if you guys, it's here. Like it's... I had a feeling. It is all up in his brain and therefore they gotta kill him to eliminate um, yeah. the data that he possesses or they are going to capture him and extract it. So and, dirty. Uh, one way or another, there's not going to be a Luan left if uh, we don't get to him first. Uh, uh, another thing that I actually I have a question. Yeah, Mephi, go ahead. Uh, for for Merkia. Oh. <laughs> not Mephi... for you! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. Did Mephi know a method of extracting information possibly without it probably is expensive. Yeah, that's but what super I expensive. Um, okay. Uh, if Mephi, memory jacking. Yeah. yeah. That would be memory jacking. Uh, uh, if Mephi was so inclined to utilize that possible avenue, uh, it is possible. It is possible. It is expensive, and you would have to use a lot of influence to make it happen. And it is mm -hmm. not it's not it's not likely that you'll be able to keep that secret oh. like this isn't something that can just yeah. happen in a back room somewhere this involves a number of moving parts but it can be done well then is it hmm. you would owe me your life basically at once and probably all of your children's then we have things for us just we will table that for now. Put it on uh put it on the back burner. So anyway, continue. Uh, oh, okay. Uh Miller, what else did you know? That's about it. Are you Mostly sure you what were I've just got. about to say something as you were wiping like all the noodles off your face? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. I <laughs> I was just, I was just thinking about, like, Luan and Crossroads, that's kind of, kind of weird. Like, what do you think? Like, who is this Luan? And why is everyone, like, infatuated with them? I mean, Luan is beautiful. I've tried to make my own advances and I was rebuffed. Uh, but beyond that, Luan is brilliant. He has been operating on his own for as long as I have known him. He is a wildly successful individual and has mostly been able to remain in the shadows. Interesting. It's a good life. It is not an easy one, but it is a good life. Mm. And I can understand why a lot of people uh, consider that admirable. Mm. So Nyx is in the canal. Um... They are dead? <laughs> No, 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 no. I'm like a houseboat. Oh. Like in the canal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not thing. on the canal, not in, in the okay. canal. I, I, can, I can see, I've, I've pulled many a body out of the canal before, but not, this isn't in, this is on. Many? Yep. Many. Nothing. I was a detective. Okay. It, you see, you see oh, this all the time. I suppose so. <laughs> a good place to look when somebody is missing you know 
Yeah. How did we... this conversation get to here? <laughs> whenever whenever y'all are ready for uh, the data <laughs> analysts to come in, let me know. Um, but I really enjoy y'all RP. <laughs> This is the weirdest group. <laughs> right? We do not mesh. <laughs> would, it, would I know that the people that are going would I would I know an inkling of the people that are going after the one? As to like who it is going after him? After them? Or any enemies they've made? Mm. Okay, so you mean like um knowing more besides uh Longbridge, Air and Space and also the Windsor family? I mean, like, okay, so it's connected yeah. to the Windsor family, so then it'd be like the Windsor family mm -hmm. security of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, I should probably let you guys know that too. Um, so the information is connected to, um, is it the bad Longbridge Air and Space uh, and the Windsor? It's Longbridge Air and Longbridge, Space. yeah. Um, Longbridge Air and Space, if you guys know anything about it, and the Windsors, which I see, I'm, it's, it seems to be a common thing right now that everything is kind of coming back to the Windsors. Um, so, mm -hmm. I, regardless, this is this is high up stuff, and if they get to him first, it's not going to be pretty. That's kind of the problem at the beginning. You see, Luan took some information from that bri that long bridge, air and space, and uh, that information was directly related to the Windsors. I mean, I called that Mephi right after to ask if she knew about any drama, and, well, she mostly rambled. <laughs> Sorry, Mephi. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, I, I did discover that uh, they are most likely the ones that are out looking for him, and they have the most power, the most resources, and the most killing abilities, and, you know, they're able to do it quietly. Mm. General Makes knowledge sense. for uh, Longbridge Air and Space is that mm -hmm. uh, uh, Longbridge Air and Space is uh, an, the under it's an underdog type of company, like a rising from the ashes type of a okay. deal. Uh, with Longbridge Air and Space, uh, it seems to have a lot of uh, United Britain's interests um, in effect to where uh, they're trying to expand to different colonies and planets. Um, uh, where it's outside of UN Protectorate, where it can be United Britain having its own thing. It looks like that's what Longbridge Air and Space is all about. And the Windsors have been investors in that, where it's like, we're here for the people. We are trying to, we're trying to expand our interests beyond what the Protectorate says that we can have. So that's general knowledge of what uh, Longbridge Air and Space is about. It's, um, uh, they're colonizing. So there'd be no surprise that they're connected to the Windsors in some way. It's it's a it's a surprise that there is data so highly regarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Between the two of them together. And then it's like, well, what in the world is that then? Mm -hmm. You know, if everybody generally knows that they're connected, then why is this like such a high priority to where they are trying to kill Luan to stop the data from getting out? What is this data? And no one seems to know what it is. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'd like to look at Mephi and be like, you seem to know the Windsors. Do, would you know, like, what could possibly be this information that is oh so important? Well, you see, when you uh, attend like gatherings you with Charles, you don't get information. It's, it's, well, there's not a lot of talking involved. Ah, uh, yes, I've had a few encounters with them myself, and there's not a lot of talking. A lot of screaming sometimes, but not talking. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's different there's different kind of events that people would be of a uh, part of that would involve the Windsors. So if there's sporting events, then yes, there'd be yelling and not a lot of talking. <laughs> For instance. Um, I will say uh, that there, there is no way that Methy has the information of would be connected with this high priority, uh, mm. priority information. This is very, very, very inside Windsor family um, kind of information that uh, Luan has stole and that Nick uh, somehow has um, knowledge about. It's something that I could probably guess at. 
but it would just I mean, you, be guessing you, you, and not. You can guess, yeah, but it wouldn't I, be actual information. It would be just <laughs> like, well, I heard that like maybe this thing, and it's connected to this. And I guess you might put that information on this drive here, but I don't have anything coming. And that's really just like Methy also being in high enough society to know what you would like huck away. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no harm in trying. <laughs> uh, at this point, um, with uh, Ritz getting there, is it the third or fourth bowl of uh, of delicious ramen uh, being? It's the there? third. It's the, the third. third. Uh, and anybody else who wants a refill or a top off on what they are enjoying, um, perhaps uh, Nero, uh, you have Suntory, right? So it's like perhaps Nero has uh, Suntory. Uh, McAllen is, still exists and is an <laughs> option also um, for, uh, <laughs> for uh, uh, imbibing. Uh, you then, uh, a person enters the room. Uh, they are of uh, Korean descent, uh, wearing a very smart suit. Uh, and they look a little disgruntled. Uh, as uh, as uh, he comes in, um, looking around at the uh, the private room, looks over at uh, Mephi and uh, does does a does a nod um, over to Mephi and then uh, walks up to your table, uh, very smartly dressed, and uh, yeah, uh, let's say uh, Angelique uh, comes over and is like, this is uh, Kin Cho. I works with uh, secure computer systems, an academic intern with OAI. Um, usually very busy with uh, lab work, um, but of course knows about our situation and um, also knows uh, his way around OAI. OAI systems will be a very trustworthy data analysis for all of you and um, Yes, I I think I did well. <laughs> uh, let's see, we'll see, Angelique. And it's like that smile that's like, if this goes wrong, it's all <laughs> uh, Angelique just kind of puts like two hands over her heart and then just like kind of backs away. Like, I bet she's still smiling. It will go so well, Mademoiselle. It will. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. Kinsha. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Kensho pulls out, uh, uh, you know, to to be able to read uh, the uh, the drive for you, and and uh, as he's uh, as he's going through things, um, his uh, eyebrow lifts up. Uh, he's like, oh, um, well, uh, this is very basic. What uh, is uh, actually on this drive? Uh, looks over at Mephi and then looks over at all of you. You, you are, you're looking for Nick's Cartwright. Uh, and, you know, excuse me, this is done in a British accent, but I just got out of Angelique and for some reason I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nick's Cartwright with a Y, a mid-level employee of Longbridge Air and Space, a cybersecurity specialist. Uh, I, there's a last known address here. Dock number 342, Gas Street Lock. Houseboat, says in uh, parentheses. Uh, uh, then Ken looks back over at Mephi like, all right. Um, and tech savvy. Looks like uh, they've been impossible to trace via digital mythologies, presumed armed and dangerous. Solo operator, there's a question mark there. There's no photo with this data, unfortunately. Um, so I don't I don't know what I can give you for that. I do know that they are a long-term employee of their corporation, not a professional corporate uh, espionage agent. Um, from all intents and purposes, looking at this file, they're a long-term employee. Uh, no intention of becoming a criminal. It more looks like 
there were suspicions or something, perhaps this Nick's character, perhaps somebody else then did something, learned some truth. There's a lot of this data seems to be more personalized, like someone else is putting their speculations into it. It says here, learn the truth of Sophie Windsor's plot. Sophie oh. Windsor? Matthew, what do you know about that one? Yeah. Uh, that I would still only probably know, like, hearsay. And I'm just like, uh, just to be safe. Uh, just to be safe. You're muted. There we go. Uh, we <laughs> a ring in the middle of that uh, plot exposition. <laughs> so, uh, uh, just to be clear, is there any kind of tracking program or anything that was left in this uh, data storage? Just to. Uh, no, no, mom. It looks as if this was somebody else putting together a bunch of things using different resources. Another thing that's in here, Longbridge knows that Nyx knows. Oh. Nyx's only hope is to get as far away from Central as they can, as fast as they can get there. You know, I... If this person has Longbridge and the Windsors after them, whoever this is, I'm just going to say my own personal opinion here. Mm -hmm. They probably need to either leave and never, ever, ever appear anywhere ever again, or they just need to be eliminated. Deleted. Into the I'm, a, I'm an analyst. I delete data. This, uh, this looks really big. Then and um, uh, Ken, Ken just kind of folds his hands, um, adjusts his tie, and looks over at Mephi. Uh, then what I'm going to need you to do is send that information to this, and it's a secure server address. Send that information here. Get rid of any trace of it that you can find. Uh, Ken... Aside from that secure server. Ken connects to your secure server, puts the information that uh, he just read and like relayed to you um, over into that and wipes that physical drive clean uh, in front of all of you. Now, yep. Mr. Cho, I must ask, have you ever been stabbed before? Uh, uh, at that, like Ken gets like discomforted and like kind of looks around the room and like <laughs> looks over uh, his shoulder and is N no. Oh, I... good. So the first time it happens, it will hurt. Now, please keep that in mind the next time you do think about talking about any of the information or any of the people you've met here. Oh, I love him. I'm gonna lean. Yeah, I'm gonna like lean on the table and be like, <sighs> "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Is that understood? It's uh, it's completely understood. Deck, deck uh, again, with, this isn't British accent. I just can't find it right now. Um, <laughs> that is completely understood. Uh, Excellent. He, he does a, a bow over, uh, a small bow over to Nero and um, says, I only do what my employers ask of me. And looks over at uh, Mephi and is like, is that all? Uh, that, that's what we all, uh, if you, <laughs> no, Mephi would never stop over at anyone. And <laughs> if you speak <laughs> If you speak with Angelique, we'll make sure that you are properly compensated. I... And the way that it's said is, it's it's the intonation that it's like, yes, this is an actual check, you'll be received, or like, you'll be getting your money via PayPal, but <laughs> we're going to get rid of you so you can never speak with us again. Oh my god. Uh, but Mephi does say, I would advise that you forget that you did anything for this, you were simply helping me 
make sure that there were no mistakes on the books for this particular restaurant. There are some very strange things with a few deliveries that I had you look into for me. Hmm. Indeed. Um, I, this, this is why I work for insiders, and particularly you, because everything is paid on time. This, I, it isn't in my best interest to ever talk out of turn. Uh, and with and with that, like uh, uh, Ken then does uh, another bow to like uh, the complete company, uh, more of a polite one. This isn't this isn't formal, uh, and uh, he then turns to leave the room, uh, nodding over to uh, Angelique. Uh, she knows which account to send the the money to, uh, and Ken Cho then uh, leaves the room. Well. That was pretty successful. We've got a, an address. We've got a name. I, I do not believe they are still alive at this point, but I am more than happy to investigate. I have a houseboat to go to. We should, yeah, we should definitely get to Nix's. We should head there ASAP. Bef well, we should try to get there before they do, but I don't think, I think we're gonna be way too late anyway. Mm -hmm. We know how these things work. Hmm. Yeah. They move fast. Uh, I think while everyone else is deciding what to do, I'm gonna try sending some kind of, like, text-only message to Charles. Ah! <gasps> Sneaky sneak. <laughs> and just uh, be like, uh, what is your brother planning? Uh, you you get a, a text message back. It takes it takes a bit. Let's say that you sent this a little earlier um, uh, during this interaction, and then like finally you get a a, a text back uh, from Charles, and uh, it says Henry question mark fuck all. <laughs> okay. Uh... Like, he literally asks, you know, what's Henry up to? And Charles is like, Psh. like, he's up to fall. Um, I feel like, uh, Nephi would have probably gauged this at some point. Is Charles more of the, like, mama's boy that actually, like, cares about his mother and family? <laughs> Uh, no, Charles is the reckless and wild one. Henry is the resentful one. There's a bit of a... There's a bit of a wedge between the two of them that you would know, like, uh, just because of Sophie's, like, ambitions um, that are the publicly known ambitions that she has. And then Henry and Charles both resenting her. Charles using that resentment to be uh, wild and reckless, uh, while Henry is younger and hungry. Um, and, you know, Charles is the older brother. And there's that older brother, younger brother dichotomy that's going on there. Uh, but it's pretty like public insider knowledge that Henry is power hunted. Yeah. I think you mentioned, yeah. In insiders, insiders so, know that about Henry. Okay. Uh, is there a way to tell Charles to? not be resentful for five minutes uh i mean you can text <laughs> that to him um uh, do you want to do a roll for it this would probably be like let's yeah, do a roll for yeah i think i would do it so let's go ahead and have uh Maffy, uh do empathy diplomacy uh, and uh, with that, you have uh, you have a relationship with Charles up to a certain point, you know, up to a certain point. I mean, he is part of the royal family. So we're going to go with a bonus dice of a D10. Also, give me a luck dice, one D4. Your uh, target result, this is through text, and he's already he already feels like he gave you a thing with like doing the invitation to the Undergarden. Um, we're going to set this at a uh, higher end of tricky with a target of seven. So target of seven, uh, bonus dice of, I, I believe I said a D8. Okay. 
And then uh, one D4 luck dice. And let's see what the dice have to say. Okay. So your target went under it. Your luck doesn't come into, this isn't a stroke of luck. It isn't catastrophe. But you did get degrees of success with rolling a four uh, for this. So uh, let's say that Mephi sends a uh, uh, text back. Maybe there's some gifts uh, involved too, uh, where it's basically saying, don't be a wanker. Um, you know, when it, when it comes to this, I'm legitimately asking you to be forthright with me when it comes to um, what's going on. I have your best interests in mind. Uh, so let's say it's it's a version of uh, sup, but emotionally. Yeah. So uh, uh, what would you like to ask him? Um, I guess this is a favor of like, try figuring out what's what Henry is planning, because whatever he has in mind is not going to be good for you. And probably not going to be good for your family either. Um, you And it's you, involved with whatever's happening at Longbridge, just to tie it back in there. Uh, you get back a, a longer text um, going, uh, going to the effect of, didn't know that in Riyadh, any plans with Long Bridge Air and Space? Uh, I thought that was more Mom's deal with everything. I'll check in on him okay. to make certain he's not he's not doing bad things. It's just not worth it. Yeah. But I've got my own things in mind, and also, thanks for looking into it, Mephi. Appreciate it. Uh, there, there's a little sparkly heart that's sent back. It's whatever color Mephi's hair is, so I guess uh, bronzy, <laughs> pink, huge color. So you you do know that uh, Charles, yes, the wild and reckless one, is not, didn't know that Henry was involved, thought it was mom. Um, and you're, he didn't, if he didn't know, then it's not necessarily a fact that Henry is involved. But him thinking that the mom, Sophie, is might be worth investigation. Then... Yeah, uh, I... What do I tell the rest of the group? Um, it's if like you sitting just there wanna... texting, right? Yeah. Whatever, yeah. if you want to just have it relayed what is relayed, you can, or if you want to decide what they need to hear also good uh i think i cut out some of the the speculation and it's just like well everyone knows that uh longbridge is sophie's thing yes whether or not they know it or not or it's non-insider knowledge i guess it's just this is longbridge is sophie's thing Yes. You yeah. know, you know. Yeah. I think. No. Honestly, no. <laughs> well, it, it's a Sophie's thing. So, perhaps once we figure out what is up with uh, the Sneaks character and uh, possibly get them somewhere safe. And the French countryside is, of course, always beautiful. Uh, Keep them somewhere safe until we know everything that they know. Mm. You are still presuming that they are alive, and we are we're just kind of like hanging out. Could we get going? You got that car you brought? We around? should. We really yeah. should. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, make sure you have your all change. We need to be dressed for the occasion. And then it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, gonna spring this on us. What? what? <laughs> uh, Angelique appears near the door and is like. I have a room with wardrobe ready for whatever you need. Mm -hmm. uh, I own two shirts and one pair of pants. Uh, I think I'm good. I am sure that I got your size correct. Uh, look, looks over at Nero. I am not so sure about you. Looks over at Mama Sky. <laughs> and looks Swear to God, at if it's too big. 
But just come this way, and uh, the wardrobe is waiting for you. Uh, and I think, like, as uh, we all kind Are of. Are we getting dressed her... into, like, matching outfits? But, like, <laughs> Nero's gonna go over to Ritz. Uh, do we have time for, like, a, an outfit change? I thought this was, like, a time sensitive thing. I mean, do you want to make it a race? Reading the room? Are we racing? I'm ready! <laughs> I'm ready! <laughs> If y'all want to change, you have it. Uh, but also, yes. the car is waiting to take you to the canal. Uh, uh, if specifically Messi is for Ritz, car if there's any blood on your clothes, you might want to change them. Oh my god, yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> is there, yeah, I didn't think about that. Is there any residual blood on me? Um, On Ritz, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Of course you got there blood is. On your shirt from getting popped in the face. Like that's that's a thing. Uh, oh, Nero, no. more more than likely, you might have um, some blood splatter from Ritz when you were cir when they were circling around uh, to then get like popped with that roundhouse. So more than likely, you might have a little bit. Um, uh, oh wait, wait, no, you were in a synthetic. You were in a synthetic. I was. Fine. Yes, yes, the yes. The only person that has uh, blood yes, on them uh, is Ritz. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I will. I will go and change. Uh, like just basically like throw off my jacket, change my shirt. Uh, but I'm looking for like a standard T-shirt, and I'm gonna assume that that is not in here. <laughs> uh, there are there are T-shirts. They're all made of silk, uh, for instance. Uh, so I mean, it is in a T-shirt form, you know. Mm -hmm. that's that's there uh it's it's a very high quality clothing it's it's like a leather-esque uh jackets for instance uh if that's uh ritz's uh aesthetic uh the jeans are uh are artfully ripped <laughs> oh yes we're going for this like this really nice like detailed kind of like leather jacket with the little ribbing on it and then the the top, the ripped jeans I love it. Yeah. Uh, during during this, uh, where there's like this wardrobe change happening for Ritz, who who like literally had blood going down <laughs> uh, on her uh, on her uh, inner t-shirt. Uh, Mama Sky, you're you get a, an incoming message. You realize that while you were sitting here during dinner, that you you didn't you didn't see that you were getting a call, and there is a voice message. It is from Charlotte. Um, Charlotte is bless her soul. Basically asking what's going on with Luan. Is there any way that she can help? Um, the address that she has for Luan is completely different from the Nick's address. Um, she also lets you know that she went to Luan's apartment, the the same the same one that Nero would have had the address for, um, and it has been cleaned out. Oh my god. Um, do I have any- I feel like I should just reach in my boobs. I'm sure there's stuff in there. Uh, do I have anything to write with and or on? Oh yeah, definitely. Let's- I'm not gonna be that GM that's Okay. Like, oh, <laughs> you didn't that? have it before. Yeah, um, no, 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 no. I, I, uh, I don't- I don't know who to trust in this situation. I- I feel like I'm against everybody now. Um, I will- I know, I was about to say, Nero is probably the only person that I- because I- I called him in the beginning, so I feel like he I know him to have information and he knows a lot about Luan. So I'm gonna pull out and write just like spark notes of what she told me, being like, this is a different address, it was cleaned out, uh like this is from Charlotte. Um and then I wanna, I guess, text back to Charlotte if texting is approved. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, go for oh it. cool. I'm so used to not having phones. I've got phones in right. two games and it throws me off. Got a sniper <laughs> rifle, throws me off. Okay. Um, yeah, no, there's holograms in here. I mean, there's, oh, there's goodness. I'm just I'm just keeping this easy breezy with just like, got oh it. yeah, you got a call. Oh yeah, you got a text. So we don't have to oh, get yeah. far into that with like, but no, this is cyberpunk future dystopia. There's there's okay. um, you know, you could do like huge billboards of like holograms and like uh <laughs> call me pattern. just on a huge billboard. <laughs> There's literally, you can have devices like uh, in your eye to like project, uh, you know, different things or to like talk with people at the same time as like Oni, like you have like Oni devices. I'm just trying to keep this- Awesome. As, uh, yeah. Just simplified. As yeah. As possible for us to just be able to play. Okay. Then uh, discreetly, that's what I think that's why I would want to use a, a text message. I would discreetly okay. text Charlotte back. Um, I guess since she is a lady of the night, um, I'd be able to ask them to kind of like, just 
be ladies of the night and kind of discreetly ask around, try to get some information about the specific family as, you know, on the down low as possible. Uh, if Charles or Henry comes in that they pay extra close attention and any ladies who are regulars of Charles and Henry, if they could bring forth any information that they have learned, even if it's like a weird, just like a, they were talking and they heard some weird uh, lingo or something that they don't understand, that would be important to know as well. Okay, this sounds like you are calling a favor to- Take my point. Take All it. Right. So you are calling a, a favor to uh, network uh, your your uh, workers of the night uh, in, in the sense. So I'm going to go ahead and take an influence point with you. Uh, I'm going to say that I'm um, calling in this favor. There will be more information that is generated with this. It is going to take a second to be able to get what you want from That's the okay. Windsors. So more than likely, this will be something that will come more into effect in our next game. Okay. But this um not insider knowledge but outsider knowledge of what the windsors are up to and rumors and everything that is uh surrounding them so awesome and, and i guess i would also tell her as a as a ps if you hear from luan to call me and if you i don't answer to also call nero <laughs> Okay, got it. That's it. All right, so, uh, and at that, we are then going to uh, head on over. Are we heading over to uh, the boat house, house. Nix's address? Boat yeah, we are. I'm excited for the boathouse. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so uh, just to give a little bit of background as uh, we are going over to the waterways, uh, the canals. So uh, Birmingham's canals, um, powered by the Industrial Revolution, the UN declared them historical con uh, conservation areas. And that, that happened like in the mid 21st century. So Central has more miles of waterway than Venice ever did. And I guess at this point, it would be like ancestral uh, Venice. Uh, and, it, yeah. and they've survived uh, centuries of growth. However, with uh, no funding for maintenance, except, you know, the occasional burst of charity from some mysterious benefactor in the hub, uh, for instance, most of the water is green, sluggish, a dumping ground for everything from medical waste to uh, human remains. Um, but there are sections that are still run clear as a crystal. You know, uh, it's like these, uh, this brilliant beauty in the dull gray of the city. So, and also something to keep in mind, since most of the canal network is of no interest to anyone, it's almost unscrutinized. So unlike in Central where City Sense can track people that do not either have uh, the influence to not be tracked or know people that know people to then fly under the radar, the canal network is more open. City Sense is not, um, a thing there. Not, not that it's not a thing, it's that it doesn't always factor into the calculations of what goes on in the canals. You can do business off the books if you do it on the water. Oh. So, yes. So you are heading uh, to the canals specifically. You are going to uh, Nix's um, houseboat. And let me just reiterate. Well, you know, y'all, y'all heard the address. Okay, so dog, um, dog three, three something. <laughs> and there was more to it yeah. that I didn't get, <laughs> but we have the data. Excellent. Okay, so when you come up to uh, Birmingham's canals, um, as close as uh, Mathis car can possibly get you to your destination. Uh, you are then going to walk, um, you know, the rest of the way in. Uh, and you see that uh, Birmingham's canals are home to a lot of houseboats. They're odd. They're, they're a favorite housing option for Central's small middle class. There is a small middle class and it appears that Nix is one of them. It's like it, um, the houseboats offer a certain amount of peace and privacy, or let's say peace and privacy. Uh, that the city's huge blocks of tenements just don't. And um, so when you come upon uh, Nix's houseboat, uh, Nix with a Y, Nix Cartwright, you see that it is small and modern. 
And, you know, while by uh, historical standards, it being tiny, uh, it looks bigger and more luxurious than basic income housing that most central residents would have. So you are standing outside of this houseboat. Um, right now, it's still the same night that you battled in the octagon. So it's more mid evening as opposed to um, early evening uh, that you were a part of before. It's not too late, not too early right now. And there does not seem to be a whole lot of foot traffic where you are. Perhaps in this part of Central, people are already already out to beat traffic or they've decided to stay in for the night. So you are outside of Nix's houseboat. All right, how are we proceeding with this? Do we knock? Do we barge on in? If I'm somebody gonna break in. walk up to the door and I'm just gonna like bang on the door and be like, Birmingham Cops. police, open up! Cop style. That's a tactic. Oh. I'm, that one always scares That's me. So, so I'll keep an eye out on the back window. Uh, it is a very loud bang. You know, it's forceful. Yeah. Um, yep. There is no answer inside. You get the sense that there is nobody home at this time. Is the door unlocked? Busted in. The door is not unlocked. Do you want to do uh do you want to do a roll for it? You want to pick this lock? Does Fruits. someone else want to pick this lock? You want to I was thinking, thinking more into. just like Busted But open. yeah, if someone wants to if you you can I'm check gonna the window. Do like a, I I'll, get... uh, I'll keep watch if anybody wants to try to open a lock or a window. I'll like look out toward where we came from. I'll look for a window. I was already kind of walking around the back because, like, statistically, if you hear cops and banging on the door, you're going out the back. Out the back, yeah. Uh -huh. So <laughs> Nero's going to kind of, like, meander around um, and just check all the windows to see if anything is opened. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, just go ahead and give me a search then. Uh, let's say that, uh, you know, since someone didn't immediately run out the back once Ritz just kind of, like, uh, cop knocked <laughs> on the front door. Uh, go ahead and give me a search for an open window on yeah. uh, the back. Uh, okay. Pretty, It's pretty easy to uh, search for that. We're just going to set this at a lower end of easy of a 10 for your target. Perfect. Uh, no bonus or luck with it. This is just you looking to see what's going on. I found something. Heck yes. Uh, so you found something. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, you you definitely found um, a, a way into this houseboat. Not only that, but you found a way in that everybody could get in without um, making it detectable from the front. Let me know how Nero gets uh, himself and the rest of the party in. Uh, there's a window open that's like the ones you kind of pull up. Um, so he's able to like heave himself inside. Um, I think on the inside, there's like a, a kitchen counter or something so he knocks over like a plate uh pushes over like the soap dispenser uh maybe a cup falls into the sink but uh all right this is good and then he's gonna go to the front door and unlock it oh so good <laughs> i was like thinking about how to get through the window but no awesome that's so much easier <laughs> this is my first rodeo <laughs> easy peasy so, yeah nero uh appears at the front door um, letting the rest of you in. Uh, when you when you walk into this houseboat, uh, you see that it is yes, it is it's bigger and more luxurious. Um, also on the inside as well as the outside. Uh, it's almost like oh, where does Nix get the? How much are how much how much is he paid? How much is he paid right now? Because this is this is kind of decadent for 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 what it is. Um, it's decorated with artistic photographs of Central's landmarks. There's very sleek furniture, the stereo system. As soon as you walk uh, into the living room area, it immediately like clicks on with like this, uh, this mood music uh, where it's just like, uh, and the mood music is more of a relaxation type of a deal mm. where it's just like, welcome home. You're in, exactly, you're in your pod, it's safe here, welcome back. Like it's that kind of mood music. Um, as soon as you sit in, uh, as soon as you step in, uh, in the stereo system, as to die for. Uh, you know, um, just so that y'all know, 
um, the way that you were reading the area uh, before you came in, and um, you definitely know from just like looking inside and how everybody was, where it's like there wasn't a lot of foot traffic and whatnot. You know, if there is a huge commotion or something that happens here, uh, neighbors will call Legion security quickly. Um, if they, for instance, realize there's a break in in progress or there's something, you know, such and such happening. Uh, and uh, at that realization, uh, we'll say Nero, since you opened uh, the back window and like came in, you notice that there is a uh, light flashing uh, on the side uh, on uh, near the door. And you, you think to yourself, oh, of course, of course, with all of these furnishings, now that you see it from the inside, there is a top of the line security system that uh, needs to be disarmed. Yeah. Uh, with... Y'all should go uh, investigate the house. I'm, a, I'm gonna take care of the security uh, alarm. Would I notice the security alarm too? I mean, I can announce uh, it to you. Yeah, I think Nero just announced it to the party. Okay, cool. um, and you would also know to be able to disarm this uh, security system, cool. it would take a challenging data engineering check. That <laughs> Oh, no. Can we work together with the, uh, we the can, we team can, of we friendship? Can this, we can set this at a, as a party thing. Keeping in mind, setting this as a party thing also sets failures uh, uh, as a party thing. Um, so if everyone wants to give me a data engineering check, um, this is set at challenging. We'll put it at the higher end of challenging as opposed to the lower where uh, it will be a five. Okay. So, um, go ahead and look into your equipment also. I believe there was a character that has something to do with uh, data that has under their equipment. On your character sheet, if you look, there's character sheet and then there's equipment. And if you scroll down, there's uh, some other equipment things that you have in there that might be able to be utilized in this situation with a uh, bonus dice and the such. But well, other ones... How about y'all? I have a surveillance bug and audio device, which is pretty fucking cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, I didn't know I had that. <laughs> I have a portable deck. What? I think it specializes in digital networking, though, and not necessarily engineering. Yeah. Yeah. This is definitely a digital engineering um, with, the, with the portable deck. Yeah, it's... Um, it would be more like a enhanced processor type of a type of a stuff with having this uh, this portable deck, not necessarily yeah. utilized in this specific situation. I'm also uh, gonna have an observation drone, which won't do much. I have data storage that have two programs fully loaded on it. Oh, look at that! <laughs> that huh. I don't know. I don't right, know so what I... options that offers me though. Let's see here. So, methy data. Oh, it's data storage. Or are you saying the? Uh... Yeah, the data storage. Okay. I don't know if there is, is a program for. In order to recognize. Okay, so this is this is uh, data storage. You can recognize an interface with uh, data stored in that. Uh, device and along with that you can have two programs fully loaded into it if we want it to say right now that you have um, some sort of hacking device loaded into it that would we can put that in right now as a data engineering um, thing that Mephi would have you would not be able to later retcon that and be like no 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 yeah. it's not that that would be one of the two programs that you have loaded into this um And the whole, the, the additional line about uh, it's able to com uh, allow a complete copy of someone's DHF to yeah, transfer that's... to it. That yeah. I wouldn't be able to do both, right? Yeah. Right. <sighs> so if you keep it, if you keep, if you keep it empty, you can um, allow a complete copy of someone's DHF to be transferred to it. If you want to start using some of that storage space, you totally can. Uh, let's 
see the metagamey thing would be to have an unlock program. But I want to save Luan. I want well, to save how... Yeah, well, <laughs> it was Mama Sky. Didn't you say that you had uh, something? Let's see. So I have a surveillance equipment, which we could leave here and yeah. then we could leave it here and when we be able it's video and voice so we'd be able to like see and hear what this person is saying without even having to meet them if we wanted to scoot skit and skedaddle without having to deal with the alarm system um but that's option b yeah um we will say this i i would um i would be able to give you the option of wiping programs later on if you want it to have um, those two, if you want it to have one of those two programs like locked in now, you can have the option of a role or bringing in a data analyst uh, or data engineering person to then wipe it to have, where you can do a complete copy of someone's DHF within your data storage device, can definitely have that open to you for later. Uh, if I can wipe it, then it would be knowing Nero specifically in the kind of trouble that he can get into. I would have something for like, I guess like common overrides for like the average security system. Like uh, when you have home security, there's a code you can punch in if like, like uh, you're not home, someone can punch in the code so the alarm will stop going off, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's say that uh, Mephi, uh, because of uh, her connections uh, with uh, different security systems, ones that she has uh, invested in, perhaps, you know, with like uh, insider wise, um, are you willing to use one of your um, influence points to make this where it doesn't have to be rolled at all? If not, um, then I will add a bonus dice of data engineering here, where I'm going to say that this is a decent equipment used for its intended purpose, which would put a D8 a bonus dice for your uh, data engineering. How much do I feel like gambling? Uh... That security light is blinking more and more ominously. <laughs> yes. You know what? I will say I, that I want to take some chance. Things. There's a number of things to discover here that you would want to discover now as a yeah. person leader. I'm gonna take two chances. I'm gonna I'm gonna add the bonus side instead. Okay, so uh, for your data storage for one of the two programs that you have in there, let's say you know the second program, we'll figure out what that is. But this one is uh, data engineering specifically for security services. Uh, so you will get an extra D8 uh, onto your roll. I'm going to allow for everybody to go ahead and do um, a D8 with this. Your target result is a five. This is challenging. Uh, anybody else? What else? Let's see right here, over right here. What section did you want us to roll from? Oh, okay. This is data engineering. If you look under, let's see here. Uh, on your character sheet, you go under acuity, so data engineering, uh, and then mm. the uh, target result is a five. Um, Mephi, please add a D8, uh, one D8 to yours, and I also want you to add... <laughs> Okay, we're gonna we're gonna say that this is a risky situation, high chance of going either way. So add one d6 luck dice to your oh. roll, and we'll see what the dice have to say. Is that everybody or just Mephi? Uh, that is just Mephi. Um, everybody else, if you do not have, uh... hey, hey, oh, our powers combined. Go. Powers okay. combined! Very nice. Shape of not messing up. <laughs> yes. I'm way too full from all my ramen. I got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Ritz, just stand back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just um, push me to the back. <laughs> yeah, Ritz looks over at it and then uh, looks looks at everybody else like, um, we can run. <laughs> like I, I, yeah. I can 
I can put people to look at this houseboat and we can figure out when Nick's, you know, goes like, we can totally, we can just totally leave right now. They'll have to respond to their alarm going off, you know, that, that kind of vibe. Uh, and uh, Nero, Nero and also uh, Mephi start heading over to it. Like they know exactly what they're doing. They're, they're about to get it done. Uh, and then Mama Sky just like appears out of nowhere, right in front, right in front of them. It's the uh, yellow wire. Um, uh, Hobo, tell me how Mama Sky. This this is uh, for those. Uh, Mama Sky rolled an ace. She rolled a one <laughs> in this. It's like she invented this security system. Uh, how? Tell me how Mama Sky like completely aces this uh well i guess if just to flavor it i feel like uh they would go over to it and like try to look at it and they're like oh my god like there's a yellow and a purple wire like this makes absolutely no sense and i go purple wire you say like hold on crack 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 walk forward put on my tiny little glasses that i need to see small things with and oh yeah oh yeah you just flip these together like a pretzel and then you change it cheese, and you just kind of like and I'll pull it out with like a little click and then you, it hopefully the alarm just kind of silences and I go, and that's how you do a Dallas Tango. Wow. <laughs> I gotta use that in life. That's how I do a Dallas Tango. I don't know where that came from. It just popped out of my mouth. I need it on a t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> that's how you do the Dallas Tango. <laughs> with like, a, like two broken wires. <laughs> We need that on a t-shirt for Hunter's Entertainment. It's That's like a pretzel and then it's like split in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> it's a it's a tongue with like two wires that are pretzeled and it says, That's how you do the Dallas Tango. And it's like a <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah. Trademark. Okay. <laughs> so with that, with Mama Sky just oh, just getting that out. Everybody else, then I'm just gonna like ride the success on this ace because that is so choice that that just yeah. happened. Um, all of you were just like, kind of, uh, it's like, Ooh, well, this place is our place now. Like there's that <laughs> uh, mentality as you start looking around, I'm not even going to have you do a search check for this. You're able to like really get into the nooks and crannies of Nix's space. Um, let me just know real quick who here has seen Luan and knows what Luan looks like in person. Maybe. I feel like Nero definitely yeah. knows. I feel like Mama Sky knows because okay, Charlotte, yeah. Charlotte would have brought a would have brought him by. Uh, For so approval, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, so Ritz, Ritz and Miffy. Okay, so great. No idea. Um, so while while you are looking around, um, Ritz and and Miffy, when when you're looking around you're able to see that there's along with uh, all these pictures of central's landmarks um you know rotunda the hub uh, even you know the garden you know it looks like uh nix is uh one of those one of those people that like really likes to have um remembrances of the city uh that he lives in uh you're you're looking around and you also see this picture of I want to get this description right. Okay, so you see this uh, picture of uh, someone that you assume uh, has to be Nyx. Uh, a, a male, uh, masculine presenting, uh, mostly uh, androgynous, uh, looks to be of uh, uh, South Asian, perhaps, descent. Uh, let, let's say um, in their mid-30s. You know, from what you can tell, handsome individual. A lot, uh, not so many laugh lines. They seem to be more stern and confident. Uh, definitely attractive, not awkward uh, type of a deal. And uh, as you're looking around, uh, Nero and Mama Sky, you're also looking around at the same time, seeing these same pictures of this uh, masculine presenting person. Um, not a lot of laugh lines, you know, confident, wearing a bland charcoal suit. And you can't help but notice that this person 
looks like an older version of Luan. But Luan is like full of laughter and and yes, confidence, but so many laugh lines, definitely more mid 20s. Um, but it's like they could be related. If that's Nyx, they look like an older version of Luan, like to the point where this isn't just a familial, this isn't a familial resemblance. Resemblance. It's like, it's like if this is Nyx, then who is Luan? The Luan you know was in their mid twenties. Mama Ska, do we think that this Nyx fellow might be an older brother? I do not remember Luan telling me about any siblings. I know nothing beyond whatever Charlotte was going to be entangling herself with, with Luan. Uh, do you think maybe we got our information wrong? And maybe instead of them being like a thing, they're like blood related? I think there is a very mm. good chance of that. Oh, Are there man. any, uh, hmm. We should look in for your a computer. Yeah, in your investigations, as you're looking around this space, uh, you find a paper train, uh, a paper train timetable. Uh, buried under a heap of old takeout menus. Uh, the takeout menus are from the Golden Walk, which everybody enjoys. Um, and it's in particular, the time of the last train to London is highlighted in neon green marker. Uh, there's a cheap tablet computer with a cracked screen. Uh, there isn't much, you know, um, on it. I'm not going to have you do a hacker role for it because you're like just killed, you know, with like data engineering. So we're, we're going to say with that, um, you find visits to a DHF backup and storage service, uh, two different message boards for buying and selling data um, on it. Uh, login details are not recoverable. It will take more work and another favor to be able to know the login details of uh, where, when, and exactly who, but you have that. There's also a paper copy of Nix's employ employment contract for Longbridge Air and Space. Uh, Nix, the person that you're seeing that's in their mid thirties, that looks like Luan, but older, started work there almost five years ago as a cybersecurity operative. You see that from the contract. Um, and then with that, uh, as you continue searching on, you look in the bedroom and within the bedroom, there is uh, a water bed, a water bed on a water boat, on a <laughs> house boat. It's like, all right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you find more personal <laughs> pictures there. And with those, uh, Nix and Luan are in those pictures. Oh. Um, ho holding like this, each other, Nix looks, extremely proud looking down at Luan and Luan is looking up at Nyx um, kind of like you would an idol. Looking at them side by side, you are extremely certain that they are not related because the resemblance is just too close. From looking at them, you get the inkling that it is a possibility that this might be a double sleeving. I was about to say, we've got sleeves in this. It's probably a different sleeve. Could I, could like you, do we take the- is the, illegal, right? Completely illegal. Yeah. yeah. Completely You're illegal. not meant to. Yeah. Completely, immediately found out this is going to be a deletion, like for both parties. At that, you hear a bang at the front door, as in the door swinging open. <gasps> um, there is a person that stumbles into uh, the bedroom where you all are. You <gasps> see Nyx standing <gasps> there, standing and looking at you. Uh, we'll say that Nero has the picture of Nyx and Luan in his hand, as all of you are looking up at Nyx and Nyx runs for the front door. Get her! Get him! Get him! And at uh. that... <laughs> <laughs> Come back! No! Please! We no. have a cookie delivery, I promise! <laughs> that is our session.
gushing. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. This is exactly what it looks like. Um. <laughs> oh, oh sorry, god. I broke your plate. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah oh my gosh um I, I want to I want to reiterate that this is a dual campaign that happens on Thursdays and Fridays uh oh. Thursdays at 1 p.m pt uh, it happens with the level up dice level up uh, underscore ttv if you want to go check out their twitch where there is a different half of this story that is being told this half is going in this way and uh it's going <laughs> a lot of places uh so please let's go ahead and uh introduce yourselves and what you are doing um, on social media. I, I just want to let everybody know that there will be a week break uh, that happens for next week where we will be replaying episodes one and two to be able to spy all the little tells and everything and other uh, conspiracy stuff that will be going into our episodes three and four, which will be the conclusion of this campaign. This is only happening in April um, on these two channels at these two times with these amazing players. So uh, let's go ahead. Let's do it in reverse order this time. Lanta, please tell us uh, yourself and what you've got coming up. What are you doing on the on the social? Yeah. Media? Um. Hey guys, I am uh, Atlanta. I work for. Uh, I do work with Level Up Dice, but I'm also the head producer over at Level Up TTV. Um. We've got in so many shows over there at the moment, which are incredible. Like the second part to this campaign over there, um, which has an amazing cast and amazing people over there also. Um, but I actually personally play in um, a DD and d campaign um, on, let's see if I can get this right, in US time, on Saturday nights at 10pm uh, EST, very late, um, and she's insane and a lot of fun and we've got a new cam I've got a new campaign that I'm starting in which is like a sci-fi space in horror where they can't hear you scream kind of thing um which is starting next week on Wednesday at 9 p.m EST uh Ali B me. let us know what you're up to and what's going on in social media yeah uh, I'm Ali B. Mostly I design tabletop games, but uh, it's nice to play more. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at MadPiro, that's M-A-D-P-I-E-R-R-O-T. I'm on itch.io, also MadPiro. Uh, on Twitch, I am MadPiroTV because I couldn't get my own username. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what's happening with me for this week? Uh, I just relaunched the full launch of my little stickers that I designed that are cute and holographic and have <laughs> and they're shiny. Oh, send and the link. Shiny. Send the link. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh. My water bottle is quite I'm gonna bare. drop them on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's on my my shop on coffee. Uh, these are the remainders from when I did a Patreon fulfillment. You could me on patreon and you could have gotten these but you can't because i don't think i'm gonna put them to my game probably uh and then in this week break i will not be taking a break because i don't know how to and i will instead be doing flights of foundry i'll be speaking on uh the panels uh the clockwork of mechanized emotions in games uh, wrestling with emotions, which is just me talking about wrestling and storytelling. Uh, running a session of my game heist, running a workshop <laughs> on tabletop mechanics. Uh, and then I'm going to also be attending the convention because I don't know how to stop. None of us do. <laughs> Can't yeah. stop, won't stop. Nope. So that's me. That's me for the week. Love it. <laughs> B Zelda, what are you up to? How do we find how do we follow and find you on social media? Yeah, what's up? So I've been your non-binary busy B. You can find me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. I am a podcaster, a member of the Broadswords, a non-binary and women in D D podcast that releases episodes every other Monday. 
Um, I also recently appeared on 12 Sided Stories where we played Call of Cthulhu and I might have died. I definitely just died. Um, that's how I play games. I am also a regular TTRPG streamer. Right after this, you can catch me doing something on a channel for charity. I don't remember the details, but I'm excited and I'm going to put on a different face to play my magical celestial warlock. And the whole point of them is I can spend two turns for a magical transformation and not actually affect combat at all. Uh, so that's something that I am looking forward to doing. Beyond that, just follow my Twitter to check out my regular streaming schedule. And inspired by Freckled Hobo, I did eventually make a TikTok. And you can find me there as at uh, BZelda. Excellent. Uh, speaking of which, Hobo, what are you doing? Tell us those social uh. media. I'm creating a world of TikTokers. Oh, uh, no, I, hi, I'm Freckled Hobo. You can find me literally everywhere as Freckled Hobo, um, except for Twitter, because I locked myself out of there and I don't know the email to get back in. So it's Freckled underscore Hobo. Um, so I feel you, Mindy, I feel you. Uh, I have a lot of things going on, mainly games, except this week. Literally, this is the only week we're not doing anything because I'm going on an actual vacation for the first time in four years. It's, it's to see boyfriend's family, oh, you know, it's whatever. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, but normally um, I have a game every Sunday that I DM called for the Crown of Feywild Part 2, The Broken Weave. We are at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, normally until about 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And then I have a Monday night game on uh, twitch.tv uh, slash dragons and dreamers, where it's an all girls game where we basically go to a Harry Potter school and I have the most chaotic evil character in the world and I love her. Um, other than that, not much is going on, but if uh, I do have something happening in June, I'm gonna keep reminding everybody because it's exciting. Um, my very first produced, written and starred in production on YouTube, 10 episodes, 20 minutes long each. Becoming Famous is go going to be going live on June 11th and I'm so excited and I forgot to say about it last week, but I'm really excited and that's me. Ah. That's excellent. Oh, I love y'all are doing so many wonderful things and like- <laughs> Can't stop, won't stop. Creative stuff out in the world. This is how we do. Uh, I'm Marquia McCarty. I've been your GM for uh, this and will still be your GM for this. We're uh, Altered Carbon, uh, Birmingham Uprising. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Marquia McCarty, M-A-R-K-E-I-A-N-C-C-A-R-T-Y. Uh, put it together. Darth Marquia uh, for uh, here for Twitch. Uh, Marquia TV on Facebook, but Marquia McCarty everywhere else. Uh, yeah, this is a, the conclusion of a really great creative week for me for just like everything in general. But normally uh, Mondays, you'll find me on Roll20 app, uh, 8 a.m. PT, where I do kids on bikes uh, and I'm a, a spooky guru, fierce um, talks to her ancestors and she's 11 and a half years old uh, <laughs> person in a spooky small town. On Tuesdays is Outbreak Undead here on Hunters Entertainment, 6 p.m. PT. I am a rogue backstabber who lost the one person in her life that made the world make sense no. and doesn't realize that the person that killed her is now the person that she's leaning the most on. So yeah. that's happening on Tuesdays. And of course, Thursdays and Fridays, please, you know, continue with this campaign. 1 p.m. PT, where we're going to figure out what happens with Luan? What happens with Nyx? What happens with these movements? Whose side is on whose side? What's in the best interest of the party? What's in the best interest for Birmingham? And you know what? We're going to have to answer that. Uh, what, not next week. But the week after that. Two weeks. Week after that, yes, two weeks from now. So we hope to oh, see you there. Thanks many so rabbit much. holes. I know. You could have been anywhere. And now you are you were here with us. <laughs> And really, really appreciate that. So uh, as always, you know, be well, wear a mask, get vaccinated, uh, and then also play more games. Love it.